Hey gang, this is Fillmore, just letting you know that if you enjoy our podcast, quite frankly, a Howard Stern podcast, and you'd like to donate some money for the upkeep, uh, or you want to request certain clips, please donate to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash jimfix. That's J-I-M-F-I-X-X. You can donate as much as you want for as long as you want. There's absolutely no obligation. I can do that. That's Raise your right hand and say, I swear on the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not fucking wrong. Well... I swear in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not fucking Robin. Okay. I, I really think that uh, that was a confession that she's fucking on. <laughs> what? You, How? You mentioned the charity. Well, hey, I start... She that charity, she just uh, wedged that in. What, hey, I'm starting a foundation? That means that she's screwing the guy? No, no, no. This, is, this has been a long time coming. Yeah, but she's mentioned him a hundred times before, so why is this the announcement? Because, okay, a charity, when you go into a charity with one person... That's almost like making a baby. Um, Robin, the 34, I think, should go up to 44 on the narcissistic chart because I can't really exactly remember what Howard said. And she goes, oh, thank God for people like that. And she was completely referring to herself. <laughs> John Hine, big wrap-up show yesterday. I heard Robin on the wrap-up show with her. Guatemala. 15 Foundation. I, you know what? I'm resenting the 15 Foundation. Why I feel, are you resenting it? I don't know. There's too much 15 Foundation on the air. Everyone's afraid of you around here, from what I can tell. Because oh, people are like, it. I go, so don't give any money. And they go, oh, no, I better give money. The bigger issue here, even beyond today, is that Robin's Charity's totally taken over the office. Whether it's on air, where she's slipping in charity stuff into the news, whether it's Sal and Richard, whether it's me looking up contacts, whether it's her... Uh, assistant that's just dropped in the middle of the office when no one knows who she is and she's not in and out of Tim's office. It is, I, there's more charity work going on here now than radio work. What's the big deal? <laughs> well, the big deal took up an hour on the wrap up uh, show. You know what? I said I didn't want to get into this conversation. Goodbye, Jason. Well, Jason, I don't say. I, I do. I think I, I put I my I said I don't want to have this conversation. She's upset. Okay. She want to talk to you about it. You know what? I, I, I just have to respectfully quit this job. Right. Because I'm just a torturer to everyone here. I'm a miserable cunt who doesn't even say good morning, apparently. And what are we supposed to be talking about? You're getting... You're, listen, he I'm wants done. more from I'm you. I'm done. You're not I'm done. done. You wouldn't I'm leave. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we were having a great time. It was a good evening. Yeah. And then something some bad information happened. information that really rocked me. And it just... Fucked my weekend. I could guess what it is, but I'm not gonna. I think I probably figured it out. Really? So, uh, yeah. Somebody was, betray you? It felt like a betrayal. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to the third part of the 15 Foundation Saga. This is QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, as always. Jim Fix, a.k.a. Fillmore, a.k.a. Fillmore Fingers. And with me, as always, is the delightful Sam. Hi, QF fam. And we're uh, going to go right into this one, guys. If you remember from the last episode where we left off, um, Robin had announced she was going to Guatemala to see what the, you know, what the charity was really going to help. And then um, uh, there was a, uh, going to be an event where they decided they were going to coordinate and put Brendan Murphy's shitty artwork in there. And um, as soon as <laughs> as soon as Howard found out that he was going to be selling artwork there, they all, all their antennas went up. <laughs> oh, the grift was had. I mean, <coughs> honestly, doesn't this sound like a weird all my children's plot? Robin, the last we left off. <laughs> yeah, it's well, like, I mean, it's I, like you left General Hospital on a Friday and picked it up on a Monday. It sounds pretty much the same. <laughs> it's pretty just much crazy. <laughs> so we had played, I believe, yeah, it was eleven. Sorry, let me get this right. November sixteenth, oh nine, was the last clip we played about the Guatemala trip announcement. Now we're going to play the wrap up show from that day, just to hear what the all the back office guys <laughs> were saying about oh. this thing, <laughs> which is where you got so much good stuff. So I let's miss get it. Howard announces his big gift. There will not be a secret Santa, but there will be a holiday holiday party. And oh, Scott wait a minute! Wait a minute! Point <laughs> already. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> so we're ready. The Grinch is just a 
like bombing holiday parties. I yeah. forgot how how long ago it was when he stopped being generous. I mean, he never was that generous, oh but in 2009, guys, he was saying no more presents, too much for me, and yeah. here's a party. I mean, I've had bosses who, you know, were lawyers that threw parties too and gave bonuses. So for mm-hmm. a fucking half a billionaire to not give these people presents is insane. Right. Yeah. But we should start off with another big announcement today, and that's Robin saying that she, uh, well, we knew she was having this benefit this week, but apparently she'll be traveling to Guatemala to see that charity work in action. And let me start with the the um, the event that's happening. Did you understand that invitation when it came to you? <laughs> <laughs> there was an event that Robin was raising money for where you could buy paintings by her friend that had something to do with the U.M., but it was... <laughs> okay, <laughs> so she's crowbarring Brendan Murphy into stuff. And, I mean, okay, and we've talked about this before. We talked about it again. The problem wasn't even that. It was the problem that she goes, a portion, a portion of the proceeds are going to be going to charity. And they're like, well, how much? Well, you know, well you're not sure. So already um, you're going like mm-hmm, charity. He goes, yep. Her friend, you know, the guy like, <laughs> and then remember he was a financial guy who became in the art world. So I dug up this interview that yes. he did Yes. and the interviewer, her name is Felicity Carter. It says, what is your first memory of art? I remember, this is Brendan Murphy, Mm -hmm. I remember visiting Jackson Pollock's house in East Hampton in my early 20s. So that's his first memory of art (laughs) in his 20s. Mm-hmm. I mean, (laughs) you never, you never visited. We just thought about it last week. Yeah. And then he says, the interviewer says, tell us about your background and how you transitioned to the art world. And he says, I left America at a young age to play professional basketball in Europe for a couple of years. And after that, I ended up moving to New York to work as a trader on Wall Street. My transition into the art world can be pinpointed to a single day, 9-11, now, how crazy is that? Because that's when Robin said she began her yep. transition to not being fat and lazy. Mm-hmm. So, remember, she she thought, I would walk. die in there. I would have died if <laughs> not. If she was there, it, not 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 necessarily. The the whole thing was if she had been in the World Trade Center, she would have required someone to help her, like lift her out of there because she was that out of shape. Well, couldn't you just she, take a right. header down the stairs? Right. I mean, I watched so many documentaries and uh, things after 9-11 and one uh, one people in an office building literally carried a woman in a wheelchair, the two of them mm-hmm. down like 69 flights of stairs that it, but she was actually handicapped. Mm-hmm. So Robin was now she thinks I was too fat to be able to walk down all those stairs for 9-11. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. interesting how Brendan Murphy also discovered art. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was on the ground when it happened. Everyone who worked on Wall Street lost friends. We all knew people who died that day. That day was like a mirror for a lot of people and made many of us question, am I doing what I really should be doing? Mm -hmm. That's when I decided to leave finance and become an artist. (laughs) I remember is that, getting is that the out same, of here. Go ahead. Is that the <laughs> same way so we had a funny. we had a priest growing up that he left the restaurant business and became a priest? He was stopped flipping burgers and decided he saw the saw the light uh, in his forties. Like Wiggy, not Wiggy. Sal left stockbroking. Did he jerk off Ralph? Uh, I remember. <laughs> Go ahead. I remember getting out of New York on the day of nine eleven before they set up roadblocks and spending this very eerie night in a cabin i had in the woods just painting i had been painting as a hobby for a while but that house became my studio i played poker for a few years to survive whilst i painted i was fortunate that i had friends who were famous painters eric 
official, for example, I don't know who that is. I would hit tennis balls with hit with him in exchange to go to the studio to see his work. Also, David Sal and Robert Bl- Blechner. I got a crash course with two or three of the best painters in the world. And I began to experiment with different materials that just kicked started this entire process. So listen to the grift yeah. that we are. So, I mean, this so, is a complete interview of how to grift as an artist. Yeah. How to steal, how to rip off other artists and get your start, you know, uh, from the ground running. Um, the last episode, I believe we talked about a little bit about, um, we, we joked about Howard and Sloan Kettering cause he mentioned he donated and I didn't believe it, but our man Cormano over at Reddit did some research and believe it or not, he said he found something and that we have to, might have to give Howard a little credit for this. He, uh, he said there was a discussion about charitable donations and Sloan Kettering in their annual report. Sloan Kettering does indeed put out a list of their highest donators. Uh, I, I wouldn't have even known this because a lot of, a lot of, um, it's not always people want claim to claim that they've, um, donated anything anonymous donations. So they don't, to them, it's just about the charity. It's not about tax, you know, write-offs. Um, it says the list adds up, adds up all donations going back to 2002. Surprisingly enough, Howard does donate in the 2011 annual report. Howard is listed as donating between a hundred grand and $249,999 since 2002. In 2012, he jumps to the 250,000 to 500,000 bracket. In 2016, it's 500,000 to almost a million. In 2018, uh, Sloan Kettering stops listing individuals under a million. Howard lo- no longer makes the list. And in, it says in 2019, they only list those who donated over 100,000 for the year. Howard is not on the list. So at some point he stopped, which is, but I mean, I, I guess we have to give him credit if he did donate. I, I couldn't I have believed guess it. Yes, we have to. I definitely am giving him credit. So mm-hmm. thank you, uh, Cormano, for finding that bit of information for us. I just thought if somebody was donating to something and he said, I'm donating to Sloan Kettering, but he said it in a way that just, to it me, because he says bullshit. so many false flag nonsense, it sounded yeah. like bullshit. But I, of course, am one to admit once I find a fact that disproves what I said and my mm-hmm. initial hunch, mm-hmm. then, of course, I'm going to give him credit for it. Can I um, uh, let you – can I just read something else from this interview from Brendan Murphy before we continue? Please do, and then I'll continue with some more stuff that Cormano found. Yep, go ahead. So the interviewer said, which artists, past or present, uh, have had an impact on you? And Brendan Murphy said, Jean-Michel Basquiat, which, of course, he had an influence on you. You're basically ripping him off. <laughs> A corpse. Jackson, <laughs> Jackson Pollock and then his friends. Oh, and Picasso. And he goes, I could name so many. Francis Bacon, I love his stuff. I, his use of color and the moodiness of his work, it's just phenomenal. How do you sum up your aesthetic? Vivid, thought-provoking, layered. That, now, if that doesn't sound like a huge, massive circle jerk of, of you know, name that influence plus um, try to sound deep and insightful about art, it, I don't know what does, guys. Um, oh, it's a, ma- it's a Mad Lib for brooding fucking grifter. Yeah. So <laughs> he also found this stuff that you guys might find interesting. I certainly did. Regarding any new information to add to the saga, I did find a list of trademarks filed by Brendan Murphy. It's not super relevant to 15 Foundation, but it shows he's always got some new bullshit to peddle for funding. The one I got a chuckle out of was his trademark for VO Max or V Zero Max nutritionally fortified water, vitamin enriched <laughs> water. <laughs> Vitamin supplement in tablet form for use in making an effervescent beverage when added to water. So basically he discovered Alka-Seltzer. Um, it was filed a year prior to Robin meeting Brendan through Dr. Ronnie. His most recent filing is from July of this year. Uh, it's for capital F, small a, big S, small t, fast, which looks to be his own sneaker. Two months prior to that, it was for King of the Court, which is entertainment services, namely organizing and conducting an array of athletic events rendered live and recorded for the purpose of distribution through broadcast media. So, okay, some people will call him a hustler, um, which, you know, you have to admire someone's hustle, but there's a negative right. connotation that goes, that with, goes with that word, a hustler, okay. right? I, so no, Well, 
I, I like the idea of hustling and making the most of your, your hustling. And I don't, honestly, like anybody who makes money off of not having any specific, I guess, education or some sort of foundation from it, I mm-hmm. think that's great. But what he's doing is it sounds like an awful old country buffet fucking salad bar of bullshit. It's just yeah. insane. Well, those... like you're an artist, you're a financer, you're a fast track sneaker maker. And what else? Yeah. Like, What kind well, of Sunday is this? This isn't. Yeah. And this is not diversifying. This is someone throwing whatever th- he can at the wall and hoping something sticks. And I think it's like if he could have just married <laughs> Ophelia and, you know, put a pillow over her head and then just inherited the mother load, he would have been happy with that. He did eventually get married. And I, I've got a picture. I'll, I'll, I'll put it up as a. Uh, uh, later on to show you his uh, wife and kid, but um, I'm ex- I'm surprised more that she didn't Kathy Bates him and like you know James Con <laughs> start clubbing him at the knees in bed. <laughs> well, as you definitely misery. had a tight. Looks like misery she had a tight. part two. Let's keep going with the audio from the wrap up show, guys. I mean, I understood the event. I just I, it to me it seemed very um, spur of the moment. Like, it seemed like one of those things that you plan for weeks and weeks, and it was like, oh, we're just hearing about it now, and it was two weeks away. But, I mean, I sort of understood it. Well, Robin said it it was sort of a confluence of things because her friend who's selling uh, art was going to do an exhibit anyway. She had this thing for the U.N., so they sort of brought them both together. But the bigger question is, what do we do? I mean, if you can't go, do you make a contribution? Because she said it wasn't a contribution type of event, but if you want to Okay, so here's here's the thing I don't understand. Why wouldn't you make that clear to them? Are they that dense, or is she just that irresponsible and wants to keep it vague so that she can get the best of both worlds, people showing up and people giving money and buying the stupid paintings? Well, like we've learned from most of our recordings with Robin, <laughs> <laughs> she she really doesn't have a point, and... <laughs> She she is under the assumption people know things like, for example, when she was talking with Ganji about doing that promotional charity video and she was calling him a nutcase and stupid. He she was literally expecting him to read her mind and then she didn't answer an email reply and was upset with him like, oh, what do you need my uh, reply for? Um, Because you're the director. Yeah, you might want to take charge of the take take hold of the reins, honey. Um, so, do I believe that people are genuinely confused, or they're just using using this for fodder? No, I think they are genuinely confused at sure. what the hell they're looking at. Yeah, and we do know, guys, of course, that the wrap up show was always a lot about speculation and you know trying to make it you know entertaining for not just talking about what had happened on the show that day, but really it, it was also an extended bit of the show where if things weren't fleshed out enough they could continue there. And Artie was great when he used to come into the wrap-up show and continue a discussion that Howard decided he didn't want a part of. Like, there was one specific wrap-up show, I remember, where Norm came in, and it was funnier than any of the fucking... Any four or five hours Howard could have given you that year was not going to be funnier than him and Norm just riffing on the wrap-up show and talking stories. Right. And so that's... Yeah. I I miss, like, actual fans of the show who mm-hmm. were comedians and or actors or reality TV people. I don't, I mean, wherever it is, them coming on the wrap up show was mm-hmm. way better. And they, sure. they stopped doing that. Well, the other thing, yeah. So they, as we said before, they'd take callers and they'd let the callers get stuff out. And it wasn't always, um, they could have something negative to say and they'd allow that to happen. Howard would pot them down, cut them off, not take someone that, you know, decide, oh, this person wants to compliment me. I'll pick them up. These guys would just p- pick up random calls and whoever would have, however it went is how it went. Anyway, this is what happens when you uh, package everything and, you know, back off as callers today, guys. It's, it's 2020 and 2010. Very different. And and here's how it is. It's an adult for a, a, a supposed big sort of societal event for ch- a charity and you give them 
a week and a half notice and nobody even knows what it is. I mean, <laughs> really? This is like when I had, I had home ec and I used to get my aunt to at the last minute, so shit together because I, did, <laughs> I didn't know how to use a, like a sewing machine. And she was very, very good at it. She was a seamstress and, uh, <laughs> she's like, you couldn't give this to me a week ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. No, so, sorry, Thea. She said the art. Artwork's available, and a portion of the proceeds will go towards the charity, but you shouldn't feel like you need to contribute everything. It was a cocktail party, I guess, announcing whatever this uh, cause might be. I am perplexed because I know I can't make it, and I don't know whether that means – I don't know how much a painting is, if, if a painting is affordable, but I don't know that, that – that, I haven't looked at enough of his paintings to know if I want one of those paintings so that maybe if I could make a contribution, I don't know what to do, John. Do I sound like everybody here? Yes, you, you do. Okay, Gary sounds like a retard, but I don't expect any less from him anyway. But can you imagine what that fucking grifter was charging for his bullshit paintings in New York in a gallery? Well, I don't think he sounds retarded. I just think he sounds befuddled. I do think, though, that it is interesting because now as I read Brendan Murphy's interview, clearly... Mm -hmm. Somebody who just decided in their 20s to get into mm -hmm. painting from 9-11 yeah. and his influences are direct. Uh, I don't know. He's making almost replicas of things that people do <laughs> that are famous, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that are actually <laughs> artists. Yeah. To me, it's really uh, I wish for them that these interviews and they could research the fact that this guy's a complete grift from the financial world because they're probably thinking, Oh, he's an artist. He's been doing this his whole life. They probably have no idea. Well, don't you, don't you figure that the crew, especially Howard, they know that Ron, uh, Robin has fallen for every fucking bullshit scam over the years. She's been proven to be not particularly bright. Um, and easy, like she, the magnet beads behind her ears and the green drink and all this horse shit that she never actually stayed with. That was the one thing. She not only would get grifted, but she would get, um, like, she would go through fads so fast that you couldn't really take her seriously. So why would she expect people to take this painter guy, Brendan, who they keep, they keep just saying the painter guy. The friend. Um, the friend, yeah, or the, the ambiguous friend. Why would they take him, why would she expect them to take him or her charity seriously either? I don't know. They took Ralph seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> parking lot attendant. <laughs> Still laughing at that. <laughs> Got a parking lot attendant. Cheap. <laughs> Making him a stylist. Got a stylist. <laughs> Let's Found him in guys. a parking lot. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that because everybody is a little bit unsure. But I thought Howard cut to it by asking a question. How much? <laughs> well, that, besides that question, is this benefit or is it for the artist and but, there was a lot of inference that that you know robin is more than friends with this guy well, but i told i said on the air today everybody came by my desk the email went out and then everybody came on my desk and they were all like haha you know give me the elbow <laughs> <laughs> it's like just imagine the wow. back of, you can just imagine will and jason's faces when they got the email <laughs> Go pre-turk pre-turk yeah i think it's also funny like John says, yeah, they were wondering what this is about and who he is. But I think he added that in there because it's it's more smoothing over the blow yeah, of what he was so. saying. I think so, too. And of, as soon as you, you looked at it more closely and you realized that the artist was that guy that's Robin's friend that was up on the air that day that Howard was teasing her about, then you start to wonder, hmm, is is this, you know... Robin's charity, or what Howard called her vagina charity, yeah. something like that. Well, do you think there's something going on with this guy and Robin? Me personally, yes. And this is blind speculation. Who me? I'm like Beetlejuice. Uh, uh, possibly, yeah. I think there might be something going on. Or, <laughs> so, I mean, there's nothing like right now, guy. I'm not going to give them shit for this. They're they're on the right path. Obviously, they know. They, because they know Robin. They know she's full of shit. They know it's all about let's get into this fucking younger guy's pants. Yeah. Well, they're playing pretend right now. To me, yes. this this sort of back and forth with do you, don't you? Yeah. The fact that the premise of the conversation is this grifting artist she brought in. Yeah. Is now into this charity that she's now promoting. That somehow they ended up. Um, 
amalgamating together. I mean, there's it makes no sense None. whatsoever. So the fact they're even, do you think this is about, I mean, come it's cover, Yeah, it's covered by They're own just ass. being kind. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I also think that they don't think she's fucking him yet. Yeah. So this is why this is where the rap show was so good. This is where you get all the poison out, guys. If there's no nothing going on, maybe somebody wishes there was something going on. Who do you think? That's right. That? I would have to think it would be Robin because <laughs> you know guys generally don't say no in general. <laughs> but uh, but I I think there might be something going on, whether it's flirtation or dating or something. Uh, now. Was anybody upset around here about not being invited to this benefit? I know it was. No, I did not hear one one. complaint. (laughs) (laughs) This is where it gets both sad and fun and and ironic at the same time because Scott comes in. Go ahead, Sam. It's like being invited to a dance recital, like a kid's dance recital when it's the whole company and you have to sit through and you're just like, please don't invite me to your kid's shitty dance recital. If it's Mm. not your kid, nobody gives a fuck. (laughs) <laughs> well, the, he just reminded me. Already said, uh, Stacy and his mother went to see him in um, the film Mystery Men, <laughs> and uh, he his, his character dies like in the first five minutes or so, and then um, <laughs> and then I guess they called they called him up and said, uh, "Are you in any more of the film? <laughs> if you're not, we're gonna leave." <laughs> <It was> that <laughs> bad. <laughs> or or they watched on video or something. They's like, "Do we have to watch the rest?" So they gave it up. Uh, anyway, <laughs> See, I really didn't. Even even if Scott was left off, he didn't alert me. Yeah, I wonder if Scott Salem. Was I bet he right. wasn't invited, but he's thrilled. Yeah, we should get Scott and see if he was invited. I'm sure he'll want to give his two cents. Now, after all this talk happened, the bigger topic was Robin saying that she plans to go, not is going to Guatemala to see her work in action. And let me say up front, I think it's very noble what she does. The fact that she's willing to travel, put her you know money where her mouth is, and there's no bigger blowjob artist on the fucking wrap up show than John Hine. Uh, even Rashan, the guy that we they call we call him woke Rashan, who's on the latest wrap up sh- incarnation of the wrap up show. There have been times when he's taken to task Howard for certain things, not often at all, but uh, certainly more than John Hine, which I don't understand why you would have this milk toast, talentless fucking piece of shit narrating anything. His his you voice just answered your own question. He's a milk toast, talentless piece of shit that will take whatever he can get and is just mm-hmm. happy to be there. I guess that's it. I guess you, you, you're working for plugs and see the stuff in action. But Howard seemed very concerned about her going down to Guatemala, even though it would be for a good cause. It depends on what the situation is. On the surface, it sounds like it could be very dangerous and you know, I, listen, I was on the other side of this when, when we did the USO thing and everyone's like, you can't go to Afghanistan, you have a wife and kids. But I looked into it, you know, and I found out that, we, you know, we were going to be fairly well protected. I mean, I knew there was a danger. There's always a danger. So I'm going to figure that if Robin looks into this more closely and she sees that she's well protected, then she'll be fine. But do you think by just a 30 second breakup, Sam? Well, <sighs> First of all, they're two totally different things. And Mm -hmm. I think I think it was noble that Gary went with them, even though he wasn't necessarily as uh, desired (laughs) to go on the (laughs) trip. You 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 and I I was trying to be a little generous. (laughs) Kind. (laughs) But okay. He wasn't exactly needed. Do you need a second glove compartment in the car? (laughs) <laughs> do you need the first on what your one job is <laughs> i guess <laughs> yeah so but the, oh, you're fuck. right the, the uso tours are specifically about entertaining the troops she's not going to enter well first of all the only way she's entertaining is now in ret- retrospect uh on these wrap-up shows they, but they had multiple people that were also talent on the show so what's oh, the fuck, talent yeah. going on the guatemala trip it's just robin going to check out these things and like she said previously when she went to india she left the second she got there because the people's plane 
she, that she was supposed to be going with, they didn't right. land at the same time she did, so she just turned right around. Mm -hmm. So obviously, it's a concern if you're not going with anyone that's, I'd say, in show business mm -hmm. or in your charity that has name recognition. I mean, mm -hmm. that's different than Gary going to Iraq or Afghanistan with a bunch yeah. of talent. They were, and they were completely under escort. I mean, it wasn't like they were taking an independent, like a charter flight to Kabul and going like, hey, man, let's just go there. No, no knowledge of where we're going, what we're doing. It was a completely planned, systemic, um, you know, uh, or, ordeal that they had to go through. But the uh, <laughs> one thing I was thinking of was, you remember, <laughs> already was talking, they, when they came back from Afghanistan, they had great stories. And Howard, of course, couldn't deal with it. So he cut it off after like 40 minutes because it was not about him for, you know, that 40 minutes. And uh, mm -hmm. already said something like, uh, they told us we couldn't do any masturbation jokes. So Dave Adele went on stage and said, they told us guys uh, we weren't, couldn't do any jerk-off material. So uh, instead, I'd like to tell you about the time I fucked a sock with some shampoo in it. <laughs> 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 That's why I'll always love Adele. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's keep going. That, that was good. And how are that? And everyone's saying you can't do it. That's going to prompt Robin to want to do it even more. Yeah, probably. That's how I felt. Oh, okay. because everyone's telling you no, so you want to. Yeah, I just want to like, go. Yeah, I I felt like I sort of know what I'm doing. I hated that everybody was telling me that they knew better than me without having spoken to anybody involved with the project. So, do you think Howard's off-air chat with Robin had any effect on her decision? Well, I did see she did say off air, you know, she goes, if I, you know, I'm going to be very well protected. I go, how do you know? She goes, well, if I don't feel I'm going to be well protected, then I'm not going to go. Well, then that way, that's so she doesn't know. That's the whole point. Sam. Right. Well, that's again, what I was going to say is Gary knew what the outline and itinerary was. And we kind of have an idea of what's going on in the Middle East because we're in conflict with them. You're going right. to Guatemala you don't know anybody. You're not. You don't know what's going on. It's completely different than what Gary's doing. And mm -hmm. clearly, from her saying and announcing it, and they're asking her questions about Guatemala, she had no fucking idea. So again, I think we maybe we, maybe we did address this, and if so, I'm sorry to repeat this this point, guys. You think in the moment when she was when she announced it, she hadn't actually made that announcement beforehand. It was like literally on the spot. Well, I'm going. I'm going to Guatemala. I think she thought about it. And I think because of the grift, obvious, like, you know, blinking red nudes here, red district, grift here, she, nudes live, like arrow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, that's all I have in my head. It's like grift live. So this was like a smoke screen. Let me show you that I'm really putting my money where my grift is. And, um, and I'm I'm really into it for the charity aspect. Well, I think that's why she said it. I think she might have thought about it and then she yeah. just said it without knowing yeah. anything. Yeah, I think yeah, you're right. I think it was totally to shut them up, but she didn't really plan on going. It was just uh, one of those things where if she didn't do it, um she might feel she was going to get attacked more. Like this all of a sudden legitimizes her her uh, desire to do charity work and stuff and that it's it's not just about frivolous wine meetings or well, sorry wine tastings and shit well we said that before and i think it was some of that like i don't think it was so on the spot i think she mm -hmm. was thinking about it previously right. and this okay. just pushed it over the edge to shut them okay. up okay now she's con now she's committed she's got to go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, good luck in guatemala Fun. Do, you do you think she should go uh, if it's fun for her, if it's a thrill, sure, why not? But I mean, do you think she should be worried about it? Do you think there's any danger? Uh, sure. It's, it's, I mean, it's, yeah. Would you go? Would I go to Guatemala? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah. <laughs> if, if, if it was in the right condition, sure. But what are the right conditions? Like, if it wasn't like the fucking Guatemala, you know how dangerous that fucking place is? <laughs> 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 so you actually laughed at Benji. <laughs> I do. When Benji's like, you know, off putting and kind of against the grain in a way that's not obvious, I do think he's funny. Yeah. He's got his he's got his spare moments. Now well, Scott Salem. We're so we're so starved for fucking yeah. humor that at this, this point 
Yeah. All of a sudden it's like George Carlin just walked in the room. Um, the, so Scott, poor Scott Salem comes in and this is where it gets a little, a little sad in, in a, in a, in a weird way. Now joining us on the wrap up show, Scott, were you invited to the, uh, Robin reception for the, the charity that's happening later in the week? Yes, I was. You were. We weren't sure if you got left I out. I got an invitation and it came up and I couldn't read it. It wouldn't, none of the, you know, pictures would show up and then I tried clicking on it and nothing would happen. And I said to Jason, what is this? He goes, I don't know what the fuck that is. And then I got another invitation the next day, which had a different link. <laughs> I was confused. And then I was like, do, do I have to go and donate money to this thing? See, that was another. You so know, that's I, a weird thing. Yeah, I, I guess, didn't know that at all. So, but Scott brings up an interesting point. I guess the original email that went out, some people could open it, some people couldn't. I could open it. I saw it. <laughs> so even Robin's email is incompetent? <laughs> <laughs> this is, I mean, this but is something has, that could happen. You know, and to anybody, you know, the JPEGs don't come up. It happens. It used to happen more often than it does these days with Flash and whatnot. But um, especially if you don't have comparable like software. Software, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so fine, it's no, but it's yeah. still just sad to hear Scott though. Like in my yeah. head, I'm like, mm. yeah. But she couldn't Two, donate three. for your wife and save yeah. your job. Exactly. Days later, I got another one, which I didn't realize. Was the oh if you couldn't open this one here it is I thought it was the like what the fuck you haven't responded yet email do you know what I mean like it was three days later and I thought that it might have been like okay are you coming or not so it was the follow up to you thought it was the follow up to the initial email yeah so what did you decide to do Scott um I'm, I can't attend it's my anniversary Wednesday so I'm not going to be able to attend oh happy anniversary thanks I got to donate to that cause. I can't donate to Rob. Oh, God. Like, it's just fucking heart-wrenching when you think about him now, right? Actually, that just made my stomach flip a little. Yeah. Because, you know, like, people in your life you love so much. Mm -hmm. And just the thought of he what? lost the, her... his wife during this stage in his life where he's on the show. And you'd think, well, at least you'd hope the people that you've worked with for so many years. Mm -hmm. I mean... If I finish my career where I am, or I, I don't know, whatever, you know so many people in your life that you work with for such long extended periods of time. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine losing my spouse or my somebody close in my life and this, and this is the kind of treatment I get. I'm shut out of the office. Mm -hmm. I am now, you know, just some piece of shit floor on Sirius before I get fired entirely. My mm -hmm. whole career being a soldier. Right. And I'm backed into the corner of having to beg for money because I can't afford uh, convalescence care or, you know, in this case, palliative care, you know, um, um, you know, for, you know, because the insurance doesn't cover this. And this is, I mean, that's a whole other thing, guys. And we're not going to get into the politics of it because the show isn't about that. However, it is ridiculous for that. We will always maintain it was ridiculous for Scott to have to go even remotely out of pocket for it. And not that Howard has to subsidize these vacations or this and that, but certain employers in the business absolutely took care of their employees, spouses, kids, whenever they found something happened, they made shit happen on even sometimes even unbeknownst to the workers and said, fuck it, your kid needs a liver transplant. I'm going to put them on the, whatever we're going to push forward, you know, cause you're a family, you're a family. Yes. Someday guys will have that we're going to talk straight shit about this episode, but it's not today. No. And uh, hopefully when that comes, you guys will still want to come along for the ride. And if not, well, you know, take care, brush your hair. Enjoy enjoy the bumper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we worked our way into that one real well. Donated, you donated a lifetime. <laughs> well, it's 25 years, so I got to donate to that But clause. Did you guys feel that Robin was asking for donations or it was it, just a party celebrating it? I That's exactly what came to mind. The two questions were, one... Or three, like, do are we expected to donate? If so, how much? If we got, can we bring a date? That's <laughs> go ahead. <Sam. laughs> I know it was probably before apps and grinder, so Benji's like shit out of luck. Yeah. Um, but it's funny how they're talking so openly about what their obligation is to this charity. When yeah. can you imagine for the North Shore Animal League bullshit that they can't? Obviously, they can't say anything about it, but I'm sure no. they would be dissecting the shit out of this phoniness. Oh God, yeah! If they had any kind of, I don't. You were a you were a devoted um, O and A fan, right? Oh my God, loved them. So I mean, if you missed anything, it was just because, well, you whatever 
for whatever reason it was oh, it wasn't did I, did it wasn't I, by design did i make fun of them or did i listen to when they made fun of bath being on that was my favorite i loved both of them uh you know side by side i eventually liked ona more because of the realness of it yeah and i when they made fun of bath for being mm. on the view mm -hmm. <laughs> for doing the animal charity thing it mm -hmm. was exactly what everyone in their head was thinking would happen on this show. Yes. Like, I couldn't believe how, like, just like this conversation we're having about Robin's charity. That's mm -hmm. what should have been happening the mm -hmm. entire time in regards to Beth's animal, you know, Mother Teresa bit. Yeah. So, so this is the thing you were listening to ONA and I'm sorry for the digression guys, but it happens sometimes. If you were listening to ONA, did it make you... Did it just basically touch on things that you'd already had in your head about the show, certain things you didn't like about the Howard Stern show at the time, or was it helping to make you think less of the show? It helped me to think less of the show, mm -hmm. but not entirely to the point where I obviously I'm starting a podcast over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, that got pushed over around the 2014 era, yeah. 15 era. That's yeah. when I was like, Okay, there's like no return. No, there isn't. And for like for most of us, there was a point of no return. It planted um, the seeds. Yep, absolutely. Does it? Right, but that it doesn't. But are you ex are you expected to? Um, if you buy a, a painting, I guess that would be a donation of some. Oh, kind. of course, of course. But are you expected to? Right, Benji. Donation. Be Benji brings up a fair point. Can Benji attend with a date, have a couple of glasses of wine, a few hors d'oeuvres, and not donate? Or what's the m least I can, and it don't look like I can ask. Are you? You're the guy. I <laughs> yeah, go ahead. If I were Benji, I'd give a dollar, like <laughs> Here, a, a Salvation token. Army bucket, and peace out. Eat as much free food as you can, Robin. I'm gonna <laughs> eat shrimp in front of your fucking head, and then give a quarter on the way out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded me like it would be a great bit if um and i'm gonna throw the sctv into the mix at one point when harold ramus was doing this uh he was in, imitating kenneth uh, sir kenneth clark and he's uh <laughs> he brought on to the sammy sammy maudlin show outtakes of his like you know looking at great art and there's a picture of mona lisa <laughs> <laughs> he goes, and so it, it, this is supposed to be like a blooper. He goes, it is here in the detail of, of the Mona Lisa that the beauty and detail of Leonardo's brushwork comes to full fruition. And he puts his finger through it. He's <laughs> 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 this work of art and starts laughing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good. So I can imagine if, if Benji did that, like touched one of Brendan Murphy's, like broke a painting or something while he was there, just as a I goop. mean, it, as a... No joke, even before Borat, like Benji, I mean, if he would have made that whole act that he was doing mm -hmm. into a real legitimate piece Career. of yeah. film, Perform it would have been great because he did that before that, yes, before Sasha Baron Cohen. He yeah. was going to press conferences and going to premieres. At some point, he was going to even... um press conferences and he would wear a wig and he would right. have his girlfriend dressed like Beth and they would imitate them. It was mm -hmm. hilarious. He would go when he were doing the weight loss challenge, he'd go on the subway and have like the Howard T guy TV guys filming him pushing people out of the way, saying, guys, move away. <laughs> doing like push up but pull ups on the, 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 the you know the, the the handles. Anyway, let's keep going. I bet I bet the form you're the guy that goes to, like, is it the Museum of Natural History? Isn't that a donation? Anything not a, you not, want. Not a ticket price, right? <laughs> Whatever you That's want. Right. Here's two pennies. Have you ever gone and I've not, given a pin. Have you ever gone and not donated? No, you, it says donate whatever, donate whatever you, yeah, actually. Yeah, I mean, give a penny. You have to give something legally. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, again, if you're with a date, then you might, two you know, hand over 20. And when she's not looking, you, you know. <laughs> But yeah, no, like, but they say there's a suggested donation. But exactly, you can, that's what they call it. But you can do yeah. whatever you want. You could say, "Here's a nickel." Yeah, here's my suggestion. So the other thing, guys, before you say this, Sam, real quick, it's not like when Benji got hired to be a full time writer after Jackie left, he he absorbed Jackie's fucking salary and was making oh, six and seven figures. They spread. They basically swallowed it whole, and then they doled out like 
you know, percentages of it, like portions of it to people. But mostly Howard just fucking took that in. There's no, there's no way yeah. that went into the budget. Bullshit. Pi- yeah. Yeah. Picture the salaries, a piece of like, you know, butter on the table. It's going over a fucking two loaves of bread. They were not. <laughs> they were not giving that all to Benji. Not by any means. So when yeah. he's sitting there and they're having this conversation about what you're going to give, I wish instead of Gary kind of prying him and, you know, baiting him and poking him a little about this, mm-hmm. I wish they'd say, well, how much do you give to the North Shore Animal League? Like, I just want to flip it on its head they and sh- just they say if they-, if they had any fucking balls with this, mm-hmm. instead yeah. of acting the way they're acting, they should push for that. Honest and let's conversation. be and let's be honest. Let's say John Hine, Gary, Benji, uh, Sal, Richard, every single one of the back office people, and Fred, and Robin. Even they all go after Jet Beth's bullshit charity. What you think he's going to fire them all? No fucking way. He's got no, no show. Way. He's he's way too cheap, and yep. he has no. Um, I guess. T- he has no zest to want to hire new people no. and start all over. Can't trust him anyway. Right. He doesn't want to talk to people. He needs no. to be able to be in charge of his cult. He's like an mm-hmm. old leader at the end yeah. of the rope. You know what I Pretty mean? Much. Yeah. He doesn't want to retrain people. No, fuck no. And so certainly, and that's, and that's where I believe it, this is another digression. If stuttering John, John, uh, Jackie was correct back in the day when he wanted to renegotiate, what he needed was to get Fred, Robin collectively as a, as a whole say, guys, we work together. If you, if we all get band together and say, look, we want raises just like the Seinfeld cast, he would have, they would have had to give him raises. They just would have. Just like Sopranos too. Yes. Well, the, in that case, I think, um, they didn't James get Gandolfini went he, to he gave them, he gave them, uh, out of his own check. He asked for more so he could give to them. Correct, but then he went to bat to make sure everyone got more and the friends cast did the same thing. Yes, they uh, they all stuck out together and held out for the big payday. Of course, Wiggy, you know, numero uno. No, that's right. There's no one else. There's no one else here. It's just me, 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 me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris in Rochester, welcome to the wrap up show. Hey guys, um, you got to tell Rob, and she cannot go down there. I've actually taken about four or five trips down there. Now, Chris, why do you go down there? I'm sorry. Why? What brings you down? What brings you to Guatemala? We took about five trips for an adoption down there. Mm-hmm. And first of all, people walk around with machine guns in the streets. I mean, it's not like anything you <laughs> ever see in any country. All of a sudden, he's fucking Beirut. You know? it sounds <laughs> like Portland. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> Chris, people, p- people like the army, the police, or people no, like just people? No, the orphans. People, people. Just walk around with guns and... The guy, we actually they, um, gave us a tour guide, you know, that would take us around. And he took us on a tour of Guatemala. And if you're a local, you know, they kind of like to pass by and stuff. But it's actually segmented in zone. And zone four, which is the poorest part, which Robin, I think, thinks he's going to visit. The guy did about 90 through the area because even he's afraid. And he's a local. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will say i will say it is a little disconcerting the, the, few, the few times i've seen machine guns in public aside from you know airports obviously like guards security guards walking around uh i was in i was on kuda beach a couple years after the bali bombing and um the the mcdonald's that was near there they had armed guards in front and inside after as a result of after the bombing and in bali and um then uh, also in Manila, I didn't go, but my wife had been there. She says every almost every um, like restaurant, every whatever it was had armed guards, and they would you know because it was very gun Philippines loads of guns in the Philippines. So f- growing up where guns were just hunting rifles at best, it's kind of it is a little odd to uh, to walk around and see that. I th- I think almost now, as crazy as it sounds from a clip back then, mm-hmm. now, just the way uh, the climate is in here in our country, in the U.S., it, mm-hmm. it's become, I guess, common practice to see militarized 
things just to shut us down or to Mm -hmm. whatever. And so I I wouldn't be surprised. Like, it wouldn't shock me the way it would probably shock people back then because now it's commonplace. Right. Anywhere near the poor section. So that bitch is crazy if she thinks that she's going to go down there and not stick out or get kidnapped while she's down there. Did you uh, did you have any issues while you were down there, or, or aside from being a little nervous, everything went well? Well, uh, no, we we never got like you know robbed or kidnapped because they told us when they brought us to the Marriott, do not leave this building. If you leave, you're on your own. They the Marriott was barbed and um, actually the Marriott even got out of town. They even closed shop there because they didn't even want to be there. So we never left. You know, like I said, besides the one tour that they took us on. I mean, the third world countries, man, you, you, you actually, it is, it's, it is no joke. I mean, you are a dollar sign. I remember, I'll never forget, uh, in Cambodia, it was, um, this little girl driving by, riding by in a bike and she goes, you want a photo? Basically a lot of them would take pictures with you. This was their scam and then ask for money. And she, yeah. and so, so they're like so, the Elmo in Times Square, <laughs> pretty much. So she, she goes, You want a picture? I'm like, No, thank you. And then they drive right, right past and go, Fuck you, like seven year old. They learned this that's <laughs> as they crazy. rode away. Yeah, it was, it was really discouraging. That's like an and, episode of Shameless. Yeah, it was really, you know, just really uh, awful. When the poor part of town, he lives there. So I tell her to send a check, tell her just to. You know, give her good wishes that way, but do not go. It is crazy, especially a uh, lady like that. Or actually, the adoption agency lady was kidnapped <laughs> the first time she visited. You're kidding. So you had to start. O- you had to start over again. She's just a regular white lady. Robin's all done. I mean, they're going to have their way with her <laughs> because she's oh. not a regular white lady. <laughs> it's like a turkey versus. <laughs> I don't quite get it. <laughs> like oh. Any- I My guess they all figure God. she's going to get off the plane and just walk around. And well, she why says, wouldn't um, they listen to the last fucking third world trip she took? I can't. I, yeah, I think Robin, even as stupid as she is, she would not go through a, a trip like this with unless she was guaranteed like she's going to be escorted because she's a useless tit. She's going to be like escorted from place to place. And yeah, it'll still be dangerous, but at least she, they're going to tell her where she's going to go. Uh, can you believe these callers, like how real they sound? Sometimes I'm in shock. I'm like, oh my God, a real caller. It sounds it's, like, it, you know, it's a picture into the past. I haven't <laughs> heard this in so long. <laughs> it's like a kinescope, yeah. <laughs> no, no, because she's not Guatemalan. And he, even like I said, the Guatemalans don't like Guatemalans. And when they said, someone called in earlier, I mean, it was Howard, that said that we in Mexico and it's safer. It's true. They actually go to Mexico for safety. So go figure that. That's crazy. So, That's a crazy story. Robin just walked in. I was not going to get on a plane and just go to Guatemala. Right. So <laughs> just like the last let's time. Let's dispel that. It sounds like people think I'm just going to be wandering the streets of Guatemala We're, alone, been, looking for people who need help. You missed the beginning. Okay, so Robin finally comes in, which is actually also another really hugely rare thing. But back then, she went on several times to, you know, and this is where we got that one great clip of him, her talking about <laughs> Emily in the potty in the limo. <laughs> so, another reason why guys if you get a wrap-up show from back in the day it's it's worth its weight in gold so let's keep going yeah this which yeah. is really funny the guy said he went down there four times for you know an adoption, adoption he said I the marriott it. was surrounded by barbed wire <laughs> and they told you that if you leave the hotel you're on your own right and he said the worst part of the worst place he went to the guy who was guatemala and drove by at 90 miles an hour wouldn't even stop you understand where everyone's concern is coming from, Rob. Of course, I'm concerned, but I, you know, I'm I'm interested in going to a place that has those kind of problems. So the danger is part of the thrill for you for the no, trip. No, it's not a thrill. You know, sometimes unless you've actually seen or experienced something, you really can't convey. And I agree with her in this case. Some like I, I know we we're supposed to shit on her, and that's our mandate. But uh, if if this was legitimate, like this really was an organic thought where she felt, oh yeah, I do want to see where this is all going. Uh, but I just don't believe her. I believe it was all you know cover up from the <laughs> from the abuse she was taking. I just think that if Brendan Murphy wasn't involved with this, I would actually think this is some sort of noble thing she was doing. And I'm not saying it's a hundred percent. Just some flagrant, uh, 
I guess, push against the staff to make it mm-hmm. believable. But yeah. I, I, I just think since I see how the charity went, where the mm-hmm. money went. Oh yes. For the years, how it's now defunct and everything mm-hmm. after the fact, it just seems a little disingenuous in hindsight and currently. I wish yeah. Brendan Murphy wasn't involved with it. Yeah. The need, and that's what I'm looking for. So you feel like you have to be there to really express. Yeah, I have to to see it firsthand. So wh- who are you dealing with? An organization, a charity of some sort that's going to facilitate. Yes, this it's trip? called the United Nations Foundation. Okay. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. <laughs> so so you spoke, but you've already spoken to them, and they've told you that you you know they've. And that's a, a real thing, guys. Um, we I have a screen cap that I'm going to include in the video, giving you an idea of what you'll be doing and how safe it'll be. No, they just said uh, we're putting a get together a trip I had talked about wanting to go see what they do firsthand. Right. And they said we're putting together a trip to Guatemala. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Because wasn't it when she went to <coughs> India, it was, I'm just going with a group of friends. And they put it together. But we landed there at different times. So I had to turn around immediately and leave. So, you know. <sighs> You know what I mean? Like, with this ex- whole, like, yeah, what are you... So they're putting it together. What would happen if they put it together and, you know, the person who was supposed to meet her at the airport was a little late? Would Robin have turned around immediately like she did in India? <laughs> I have to re-listen to that India saga. I know I have it somewhere. I, I've got all oh, the audio from so that year. Oh, so funny. It is. And the, the goofy that she gets, that might, that might be worth a, a walkthrough anyway in itself, but maybe not. Um the well this is the thing you figure she's got an assistant right handling everything for her because she's such a useless tit number 500 (laughs) okay (laughs) 34 originally said you know because they do a lot of work in africa too and i would said to you guys that i have an interest in doing that and they said well you know the next trip we're organizing is to guatemala maybe you know i know it's not africa but maybe you could do that one what about what? the rough parts of Hawaii? They didn't have any trips. Well, there. you know, Robin, I was saying that I actually um, identify with you on this because when I was going to Afghanistan, I was getting the whole like you're crazy to go <laughs> oh, this yes, and that I remember and all that. that. You, you might have been doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's kind of weird that Robin has this. It's like she can't find an identity for her charity sense, mm-hmm. meaning. She has so many, she has so so much means to be able to provide for certain charities or donate to certain things. It's a little odd to me that she can't kind of find her footing when it comes to giving. Isn't it? it, it it's odd. Like, you know, everyone has their thing. Barry <coughs> has the life beat. Beth, I guess, has North Shore Animal League with Howard. I mean, whatever you want to say about that. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Um, Artie does charity through the show. Yeah. But He's, everyone seems to yeah. kind of have their footing when it comes to what they want to do with their money when it comes to charity, except for Robin has gone through these sequences of just ADD with charity. I don't get it. Do you think that Robin, in this case, is trying is shopping from charity to charity willy nilly just because she wants to see what makes her which one makes her look the best? Yeah, I think I think that she likes the honoring. She likes the ones that are more notable for celebrities and the ones that I think get her the most clout. It's like a mm-hmm. clout chase for, for charity. Mm-hmm. So we'll continue. You said you're a father, you shouldn't go. I might have to get taped for that. <laughs> but um, I will tell you that I spoke to the people of the USO and it, it was great because they said, listen, you know, we have to, you know, there's always this, there's always that. But they said, um, the thing that made me feel really good, they said, in the history of the USO, no one's ever died. Mm-hmm. Then I said that on the air, and then people told me, like, Glenn Miller died. <laughs> but, but he died, like, in a plane yeah, crash. On, on the way like, to or from, you're in danger. No one's ever been kidnapped and murdered on a USO <laughs> tour. So I'm hoping the UN has a similar track record. I, I haven't asked them a track record. I see Alicia Keys in Africa. I see Madonna in there Africa. There are a lot of people. <laughs> so you see actual artists. You know what? I Going see, these uh, I see Bill Clinton and Chris Tucker on Jeffrey Epstein's plane for the UN. <laughs> Weird. That's a that's going to be for the future podcast. Coming and going, and you know, I've never heard of. We haven't lost any stars. 
But but I will tell you the other rap I got even when I was over there was you know like w one of the shows we did was in Kandahar, then one of the shows we did was 150 miles north of Kandahar. And it was pretty rural. I was told like you know you hear Robin Williams does it, Billy Crystal does it, Letterman does it. Then I found out that those guys go to like a base in Iraq, which yeah. is not even near anything that's going on, and they do it on that base. They're not really in the thick of it, so you have to really investigate. Yeah. Now the author. Well, so I'm going to ask you. Um, didn't she sound just before we clip that? Didn't she sound a little bit like Judy, Judy Garland when she goes, uh, "Judy Garland"? The headlines will read: Judy Garland dies in plane crash for other crew. <laughs> see page seven for other passengers. <laughs> All right. uh, yeah, I'm the only one that Matt. I don't want to die with a cast of these people. She a sounds so much like <laughs> she. She it, it does sound. She does sound very Judyish. Uh, if we uh, compare the audio, and I don't want to die. I've never met a cast of people I want to die with. You go on an airplane, look around the people reading the Reader's Digest or whatever. You don't want to die with them. First place you get, I get top billing. Judy Garland dies in plane crash for other. Uh, deceased turned to section B, page 18. Now, we don't belong up there. Now, you know we don't belong up there. At least that I don't uh, understand. I have to make friends with the pilot and uh, give his children my autograph, whereupon he tells me that uh, his children are just as important to him as my life. Forget it. I'm, his life isn't nearly as important as my life is to me. Sheer selfishness. I don't really care about anybody but me. <laughs> okay. Maybe that could be a good, a good start. <laughs> maybe that could be a good start. <laughs> maybe, I could maybe I can clip some of Judy for the purposes so it doesn't compare it with Robin. <laughs> That has any effect on your seconds? Gary witnessed that. I did. I told him. I, he, I, he said, "Please don't go. Please don't go." And, and, and I said, that was it. And I said, uh, you, "Robert goes. I'll be safe." And I go, "What if you don't feel safe?" Robert goes, "I'm not going." <laughs> hey, Robert. Very simple. The level of safety you feel right now. If you like had kids Gary's age at this point, mm -hmm. would, would it stop you from going? I would take my kids with me. <laughs> no. So they. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> You're going with me whether you like it or not. So she doesn't even know. She doesn't even know what what the safety precautions are. She doesn't even know if she's willing to stay. No. She doesn't know anything, but yet if she had children, you better <laughs> get strapped along. You're coming in. Get a yeah. car seat. Well, the the other thing is like um it it's well i guess it's npd really the kids who cares about the kids it's about me they're going with me no matter what oh yeah they're just going to be like ornaments on her tree yeah. of bullshit <laughs> i got that's another photoshop idea just waiting to be hatched it can experience what you're experiencing <laughs> absolutely oh, i thought you mean you didn't like your kids yeah, i would no. <laughs> leave I, them there i would be interesting like i had a i had a list that we didn't get around to talking to a short to mm -hmm. howard today and it was from the United States Embassy documenting all the crimes against tourists in Guatemala this year. And it was six pages long. Right. But I wonder what that list would look like if you were Guatemala and it was a Guatemalan embassy talking about Manhattan. How much crime there was against tourists in Manhattan. True. Sure. But, you know, again, those are people who, who knows why they're in Guatemala. Maybe they're, they're just there to see the sights or to have an adventure or to do whatever. I, I'm going under different circumstances. Of course, because it's Robin's circumstances are different than everybody else's guys. I'm not nearly as 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 as, as, as dispensable as the others. <laughs> They're not nearly as potent as me. <laughs> Lucky for yeah. the headline. Um, but isn't it interesting how, when we're hearing this, doesn't it echo back to when we were hearing? when she was discussing uh, the stuff with Ganji about the taping, about how she just can't be wrong about anything. No. She's, she, listen to this. Gary's giving her an actual hypothetical that is mm -hmm. something to consider, and automatically, Robin can't be wrong in it. Even if it's a hypothetical, she mm -hmm. just can't be wrong. 
it's that it's that sort of that 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 tone it's a tone of her, that that know-it-all tone of, in her voice Artie used to say it all the time and it's like uh well and is there anything on this show that robin's not an expert in and um you know like it, whatever decision she makes that's going to be the right decision you know what i mean oh yes and she she can't give anyone an inch of introspection when they even put up a hypothetical like let's just say manhattan guatemala this mm-hmm. and this no 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 well i incidentally guys um the if it seems like we're going robin heavy over the last few weeks it's just by coincidence because we were always going to do the 15 foundation but the sally jesse thing was something we we threw in just as a little retrospective thing um going back through the years and i thought made a good counterpoint to um uh, how she is now and like how she is back in 2010, how she was, you know, 15 years earlier. I thought it was a perfect kind of bookend to her narcissism. Yeah. Some people thought we were a little harsh on her and I'd like to say, I think we're pretty harsh on everyone. Mm -hmm. If, uh, if Robin's getting a little bit more of it and these latest episodes, you know, I'm sorry, they're, there will be other people's time and their turn will come. Well, we actually, and well, well, we actually, I mean, this is the first real step away from Howard, um, that we've done in over like almost 50 episodes. We don't count the mini episodes really as full ones, but yeah, we never went full on Robin for anything. As far as I know. Can I ask you personally, Fillmore, what do you find more draining? Fillmore or, uh, do you find <laughs> film? What do you find more draining <laughs> yourself? <laughs> which <laughs> which one of my personalities do I find most draining? Jim Fix is a real asshole. <laughs> <laughs> do you find um, Robin or Howard? Who drains you more when we do these? Well, because it, I guess it's got to be Howard because when we do the breakdowns, um, we, we're, we're hearing mostly him. She's just kind of an ornament, as you said. Oh, she's she's her own child in the, in the in the regular show. She's she's the ornament of the show. You don't hear her as much, and that's by design, I'm sure. So you just get fed the fuck up with his bitching about oh, wear masks and oh, you know, these days that's the big focus: COVID, masks, Trump. You know, uh, stay inside, and then the shit interviews that he's got, and then going after Ronnie most recently with Robin. She's almost an afterthought, so it's got to be him. How about you? I agree. Plus, I also like when he does talk politics, Mm -hmm. it is the bottom of the barrel shit like an elementary school kid can pair it versus Mm -hmm. you have all this time to read and watch the news and study up on, you know, what was our situation like in the Middle East previously? Uh, How is the sanctions affecting Syria? There's like certain or Iran, like there's certain things that you should know as an adult i feel like and he just Mm -hmm. is a complete baby with all the time on his hands and he doesn't know anything well yeah and not not only that he's not he's not just got the time to read up on these things properly but he can do the reading from every angle he could go he could go with left-wing media he can go with moderate media he can go with right-wing media and get whatever bents uh, that he that he decides he wants to read up just to be informed, not necessarily to be swayed, but to uh, understand what it's co- where it's coming from. And he he doesn't even do that. It's like he reads. I don't even know that he reads the Wall Street Journal. I think he just has fucking the picture like the <laughs> he's got <laughs> pictures on his phone and he literally it's a if it's a blurb under a picture he'll read it and that's about it. That's the extent of Which you know he might terrible, see a headline. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is terrible so, right now because most uh, media headlines are just complete garbage now in america also robin too take away the news news is gone and she doesn't know anything either well that's that's another question i wanted to ask you uh, a previous episode actually not the not recently but a while back why do you think the news has been deleted completely from the show do you think it's she can't she's too lazy or do you think that was a mandate from him Hmm. well I think if it was a mandate from him, then why does he insist on talking politics so much? Only to the extent that he knows. Yeah. But I'm but, not I mean, sure where that came from. Because maybe if she was still in studio, <laughs> maybe she, in studio she'd have people getting her clips for her or getting, or getting her stuff printed out for her. So it's not like she, uh, you know, researches stuff. 
she gets we used to get whatever pick whatever she wanted and have someone else print it and present it to her she still would read it for the first time on the air shitty and then and now it's like it's not even there and also you don't hear her talk about it you don't hear her say like oh i wish i missed my news or it sounds very nefarious the way they've sort of done away with it and there's no conversation about it not only that change but i've noticed and i'm sure a lot of people noticed too because i've seen it on twitter they mm-hmm. cut her mic off during interviews. So when Eddie Vetter was on, he said something to Robin and she couldn't respond. And so Howard sort of ad libbed, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, Robin's here. We're all here. Because she couldn't well, respond because he personally addressed her. Well, I didn't know. And I responded. To, I saw that one as well. And I listened to it. But the problem is we don't know that Eddie might have seen like a video, like just quickly, like a shot of Robin and said, oh, there's Robin, and that she didn't say anything. Her mic, it wasn't about her mic. He saw her and then just blurted out, oh, there's Robin, you know, and then it goes back to Howard. You know what I mean? And so it might not have been, I think it might not have been a situation where she was cut off, but it wouldn't surprise me if she was. So anyway, let's try to get through this one. Oh, no, but that may not, why you're going doesn't change what somebody might no, do. They yeah, always they, ask. No, no, they no, always no, no, ask. no, 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 wait they, a minute. Leave, what what you, leave her say, alone. She's a good person. No, no, no. They say these people were out just walking around. I'm not going to be out just walking right. around. Robin, I'm glad you're down here because before Guatemala came up, we were talking about your event uh-huh. because there's still a lot of confusion I, as to... I, the, the, you know, we were trying to do something simple and it has caused nothing but confusion. It's amazing. Okay. So whose fault is that? How does something simple... If multiple people... I'd say, okay, if one person's confused, two people are confused. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe they're just... I don't know, ill-informed and unable to read an invitation properly. But if multiple people, the entire office staff is coming up to Gary's desk and saying, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Obviously, you didn't do it well. So instead of saying, you know what, guys, I didn't properly communicate this. This is what this is about. I apologize for the miscommunication or misunderstanding. Now it's everyone's a dope. And she can't understand why a week before, a week and a half before <laughs> this party, they're supposed to know that she's on the train to the UN Guatemala saving kids education. Well, I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, exactly. Well, the the again, it's it's a lack of transparency on her and on her part. But again, she's so disorganized in general. Remember that video of her office and Lisa G and Gary are cleaning it out, and there's all kinds of crap they're throwing away. They do say in life that if if you were, if you have a clutter, like if there's clutter in your general existence, it's it's, it's kind of a a microcosm of your life in general and how you handle things. It's not like oh my life is so organized normally that I need a space to wreck and destroy because uh, that's how I get my you know my angst out. So it wouldn't surprise me if everybody every single decision she made was made by someone else. I agree with you. And I also think, too, when you said it's a microcosm, let's say if she was sort of that way in her personal life, in her room Mm -hmm. or her closet kind of Mm -hmm. replicated Mm -hmm. that, fine. Why, in God's name, would you ever leave a workspace like that? I'd be mortified. Yeah. I, that one, that one, <laughs> that's one of the funniest videos I ever saw on the Howard TV. That's what I give them credit for because they made sure they filmed it. <laughs> they like, knew it would be good. Keep your hoarding at home, lady. <laughs> it is like one of those. What, what's that? What's the show where they have those um, uh, storage is it storage wars where they have to there's go into storage these storage wars and there's hoarders. Hoarders. Well, hoarders is another one t- totally like that, but where they go in and they're like trying to find the treasure of someone's locker, like storage and see that's, you know, they gave up. They, that's what <laughs> Robin's house might look like. Um, oh, you'll Robin, see stuff. I, Robin, I found a pile of Milky Way wrappers. <laughs> What's this saddle? <laughs> Why does it say blaze on it? <laughs> okay. So could you clarify for us? It's a, it's a cocktail party mm-hmm. for the charity and, you said there was sort of a confluence there with your friend who's an artist. He's going to be selling some artwork. The artwork is for sale. Okay. It's an art show and reception okay. or an exhibition and a reception. Because Benji asked, could he just come and, you know, look around and eat some food? And I then know I could. Go. No, no, no. I know I could. But what I wonder is, I don't. what is Robin's expectation? That you'd come and walk around. What would I expect so from ben, Benji? Benji's saying if he- okay, she said it like that, but 
she sounded angry the way she said it. And this is me, in, you know, in, inferring, I suppose. But she's expecting people to come down there and buy the fucking paintings. And then if she gets in good with Brendan, maybe she'll slip her the fucking tube steak. She, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. That one threw me for a loop. <laughs> it's been tube a while. Tube steak. <laughs> um, ah, so... I think that you're right. She, the way Benji, um, just she, the way she goes, no, that's not the way I'm. Whatever he wants it, it's a very, it's a very specific tone Robin is taking when it's right. coming to donations. That clearly mm -hmm. is you better fucking give something. But also, here we go again. Why people? Oh, I don't understand why people are confused. It's an art. It's an art show exhibition, and I charity it's awareness charity function. Well, I mean. Which is it? It's the old country buffet for fucking charity. Like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You could have salad, Sunday steaks, sodas. Like, this is a Jack and Jill <laughs> uh, baby shower, funeral wake, uh, yeah. op open house, uh, garage sale. You know, <laughs> this is, what the reading of the will? What is this? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh really? man, I can <laughs> I can just imagine the com commiseration commiserations <laughs> the uh, staff are doing at the uh, like, <laughs> Jason was probably eating Philly cheesesteaks by the dozen around this time how, instead of stress eating. I so badly wish I had all of them bitching. Oh yeah. Comes with a date and he comes and has a couple of glasses of wine uh -huh. and a couple of hors d'oeuvres but doesn't buy anything. Will that be seen as as no, you know, being... no, 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 no. You're there. No, I know you would never say like, hey, you know, where's your gift? Like, but but is your expectation that whoever goes donates? No. Okay. The the expectation is you'll come and you'll see the art and you'll learn about the girl fund. Oh, I like that. Oh. Okay. No. Hold on, hold on, listen to that. You'll come, you'll see the art. For that's the first thing she that came that came out of her out of her mouth, and the girlfriend was secondary. That's very telling. You're gonna come. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna look at this garage sale stuff, and then I'm gonna make a big speech, and it's gonna be like about black girls and education in the Guatemala. It's gonna be fine. What do you mean? Right. It's great. Right. Good. Yeah. Art. So. <laughs> Like growing, co barring Brendan Murphy into this thing. Anyway, it's just a little too, um, uh, as we use the word ham nefarious. Handed? I think just, yeah, ham handed, absolutely. All these implications that you're involved somehow with this artist. Uh, that's it. I'm <laughs> I, will, uh, I do enough of that on the show. I, I will tell you one thing. I will tell you one thing. John asked me if I thought there was something going on, and I said there was. I can't, I can't point to anything. But we went to a charity event a week ago, and I sat next to your new best friend. Uh, Ross's wife Melissa. Uh oh. <laughs> and um, and I tried to I tried to squeeze information out of her. She's either either nothing's going on or she's an amazing actress. Because <laughs> I really, she goes, oh my gosh, no, you know. Yeah, go ahead. You wanted Nothing's to say something. Nothing's going on. Nothing yeah. is going on. He is. There's a scene in the J Lo movie Hustlers where Cardi B, or she teaches uh, one of the girls how to strip without giving away too much at first and how you do it, how you do a lap dance properly mm -hmm. where you're just giving enough, where you get so much money, but you don't actually do too much in order mm -hmm. to get it. That's mm -hmm. exactly what Brendan Murphy is doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like a hustler times 10. Was situation. that the movie that was supposedly based on scores strippers? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah, he, he's, he's playing it perfectly except, for well, the very end, which we'll eventually get to, guys, and it is a long road, but we will. But I, I don't know; it seemed pretty <laughs> credible, but I'm, that makes me believe it even less. Well, uh, you guys continue to speculate, and I have to go. Is there work on this event? It's it's her son, like secretly. Rob, th that guy's Robin's son. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's thirty nine. He's not thirty nine. Thirty nine. I just said he was thirty nine. How old is he? He's like twenty eight. I don't know his age. <laughs> But Robin, one thing you did wow. was 29. 39 seems old. No. Like, <laughs> I'll move off this topic. We'll I found that very telling. That like you, it's funny when you listen to the show so many years and you start analyzing it as we do, you can totally hear Robin when she's flustered, frazzled, or when she's owned by someone. And when they know they've nailed her for being very obvious, but she can't. She her way of admitting it is laughing it away. 
also Robin has a crush. Robin's yeah. voice is so obvious when she was talking about Florentine or when she was talking about this guy. There's mm-hmm. a certain affect to her voice and her laugh. Giddiness. That is just for crushes. Yes, isn't it? Um, okay, so the next one clip is called Brendan Murphy Event 11-1909. That's in for, for everybody that's listening. Yeah, November 19th, 2009. And that's the, roughly the last mention of charity stuff for the rest of that year before it goes into 2010. So we'll start this one off. Ah, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, there was artwork. And then if you like the artwork and you buy it, some of the money went to charity. Yeah. So uh, I couldn't go. Forget about it. But uh, not on a Wednesday night. Although I should have gone. Did you have alcohol there? Yes. Yeah, I could have used some. Because <laughs> I spent all day uh, running around. And then I get home. And then I get home toward evening. And then I had another meeting about the apartment. I love how Howard, when, he, <laughs> when he's talking about Robin's thing, again, he's got to make it about himself about his problems and why he couldn't make it. And, and you know, it was, you know, whatever my problems were, they were way more important than going through this fucking, going to this stupid thing, which if you'll remember in the last episode, I gave him full, full credit for, I, I said, I would have been the same pissed off. Why would I stay in the city for an extra six hours before this event to go walk around and look at artwork when I got to get up for work the next morning? I was on his but, side, believe it or not. I was too, actually. I mean, yes. like, yeah, I remember this, but uh, I have the Marks Friggin for this specific day. And it said he started talking, he started the show talking about his headache. He said he never gets that, <laughs> but today he has one and he's thinking his new carpet at his home is causing it. He said he's very neurotic. He said he doesn't want anything new. Everything should just always be the same as always. Artie said that they do have a lot of chemicals in a carpet. And Howard says he has a lot of it now. And it's used to be all stone. And he thinks he's woozy from the carpet. (laughs) God bless you, Mark Mercer. (laughs) Woozy from the carpet. I love Mark's a matter of factly writing style. There's no art to it whatsoever. It's just plainly spoken a little too plainly sometimes. And, um, I mean, uh, okay. Neurotic King baby just getting worse and worse over the years, but uh, carpeting carpeting. Really? Uh, yeah. He said the dog won't even go on the carpet now. <laughs> 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 the I'm like, sorry, is that because the dog can't move from being 500 pounds overweight? <laughs> so the carpet, is, the carpet is the same as the pool. He's not going near it. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's, let's continue. <laughs> and this, this is a full-time this job. apartment takes more meetings. Yeah, full-time job. Full-time job. And Beth was uh, all foxed up to go to <laughs> Robin's event. Yeah, she looked beautiful. Yeah. I really appreciate her coming. Yeah, she went. Ooh. Dinner with a bunch of girls. Mm-hmm. If anybody wants to look, they're the uh, Alamy uh, stock photos of the event. And M- Mel Carmson's there. And Brendan looks like, uh, he just looks like, a, I don't know, a, like a, a bench player on a college basketball team uh, watching every better player than him, um, you know, on the court. And then they, they just look painfully... Um, I don't know. Like, there's something about those photos that they're so stark. I guess because they've not been photoshopped and they're not made to look like glamour pusses. But um, the you can find loads of those photos at, and Beth's there. One of them I'll put up there if I can. I have to alter them so we don't get hit with a copyright problem. But um, yeah, and so I, I think who else? Who else was at that event? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, we'll get through but, it. But uh, I was going to say it's funny the way you hear them talk to each other, like. Beth was all foxed up. Yeah, she was there. Look, she looking lovely as always. There's this read between the lines speak. It's almost like when you're reading a book and you know that the two characters don't like each other and there's some underlying tension, but then they have a dialogue between each other like, oh, how was uh, yesterday? Oh, it was just lovely, just fine. Everyone looked really nice. It was great. Oh, good. See you later. See you later. But you know they hate each other. Mm -hmm. It's like, you just feel this tension, this undercurrent. Oh, yeah, she looked lovely. Well, okay, this is uh, slightly off topic then. So do you think at this point, Robin 
is pissed off with him just because he didn't go? I I don't think she, I think she kind of already figured he wouldn't go. Sure. But I think it's the complaining. Yeah. And the disinterest in it, sending yeah. his wife, and then that's supposed to be, you know, the band aid for not going is sending his wife all foxed up. Oh yeah, she looked lovely. Is you this, see what is I'm this, saying? Is it like I, when um uh, is it like when he and Allison got her those theater tickets and it was really a gift to get the kids and Allison out of the house? So yeah. <laughs> and then she knew all about she like she knew what it was about and then he didn't do anything. He just paid for them. Yeah, and he didn't have any idea about what it was about either. Like Yeah. <laughs> and the whole what would you do we have this is a gift that's one of my favorite clips you didn't honor my birthday properly that's what she said oh, she was so odd. i mean think about that a, though like that was so insane yeah so you know there could i don't there, a part of me is like there's no there's nothing good enough mm -hmm. but then sometimes I just feel like there's no pleasing Robin, but I also feel like he purposefully knows that and tries mm -hmm. to agitate her. Well, it is amazing to hear two narcissists, not just gaslight each other or gaslight themselves, but also pick at each other in that passive aggressive way, like, um, almost like, like a little paper cuts, just paper cuts over time. I look at it like they're two opposite sides of a magnet. When you, when you, Put it, when you go to back to back to a magnet and they repel two, each other. Yeah, yeah. the, the north, the north, the north, and then like and two north magnets. Correct. Yeah. Let's see what do we got here. And you didn't get a report. No. Nah, well, uh, yeah, she got home last night around midnight or wow. something like that. <laughs> wow, wild. Oh. Which, uh, I don't know what goes on when she goes out. Who the fuck knows? Now you're sounding like Ross the night I went out with Melissa. What should go on? I don't know. I go. You know that fucking Brendan Murphy was doing coke off Beth's ass and like, like. <laughs> she got home at midnight or something like that, and then he's upset. But Robin likes that. that you. That's what you got from that. Yeah. Like you, she got, she delighted in his, like his schedule being fucked up because he didn't go, but he said by proxy, Beth ruins his, cause she'd be probably like light sleeper, you know, she woke him up cause she heard, he heard the door or whatever oh, like this. She stumbled through like fucking, <laughs> she probably was like Sharon Stone at the end of casino fucking <laughs> the hands down the hallway, coke <laughs> flying out of her nose. Uh, the clink of uh, empty wine bottles in her wake. <laughs> fucking trying to blow Walter. <laughs> Let's keep going. Go to bed. I got I got work to do. <laughs> I can't be running around. How late did your event go? <laughs> I love it. I knew I knew you would love that. <laughs> I can't be I running work, around. <laughs> I got work to do. <laughs> I've got to be driven. I've got to be driven a block away. <laughs> uh, uh, Just a, nine. Nine? Yeah. Yeah. You raise any money? Hold on. It was finished at nine. Beth didn't get home till midnight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Could you imagine what she was doing for three hours after that event? I can. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yes, we raised some money, but it was more about raising awareness. And what is it again? Oh, what is it? What girl... What's that? Oh, was it, Robin? It was more yeah. about raising awareness like i said okay uh feel more mia goes to a catholic school sometimes they have soup drives and can drives what if i just decided to you know thrust upon my work hi guys i want to bring some awareness to a soup drive just give some money or some cans i mean yeah. what is this bullshit of awareness as a veil for you better pony up well yeah i mean like there's uh, in, you know, where we live, there's a, uh, a subway stop that's kind of become synonymous with, um, you uh, like every now and then they will s alternate, um, charitable organizations that are, a lot of them are about, um, preventing the abuse of, you know, children from, you know, parental abuse or, uh, UNICEF, for example, or, um, 
like uh like when there are certain disasters that happen in life they like when whatever certain disasters happen like in the philippines or in uh wherever vietnam a lot of typhoons going on there's a lot of uh charities that get um that kind of put, put up a booth in the subway so people get that that's that's awareness that's fine but they're yeah. they're you're on your way through to the subway you know it's not going to bother you but <laughs> is there is there one is there one for chemicals and carpets that cause headaches <laughs> But imagine, like you're having, you're you're deciding to crowbar this fucking derivative ripoff artist grifter painting bullshit wares at some wine and cheese, and, and then you're going on about wanting to like bring awareness. Well, why don't you fucking get? I don't know. Why don't you just um, uh, hold it? Why, why do they have to be together at all? Except if you're trying to get in the guy's fucking pants by selling some of his Basquiat ripoffs. Well, too late. Beth already was in him first. Midnight. Hello. <laughs> you know that that fucking loser just threw some shit together the night before and bla- air, but took a hair dryer and bla- like <laughs> just <laughs> guarantee he had Beth bent over a fucking painting, blew his load all over it, and tried to have Robin sell it the next day. Yeah, exactly. Fund. Girl, yeah, but who knows what that is, girl fund? Well, that's why we have to raise awareness, right. because one of these days, yeah. it, we are hoping when you say the girl fund, everybody knows what you're talking about. I give money to <laughs> girls all the time. Look, <laughs> you don't have a girl fund. I don't know what you call that over there, he's, but it's not a girl fund. He's constantly paying. <laughs> In fact, all of us are. Oh, here we go. What How much awareness? Talk- did you about. raise? So who did you well, make aware? Everybody in the room became aware of the girl fund. You mean the, all the all the imbeciles who work here? <laughs> it wasn't just imbeciles who work here. In fact, oh. very few people who work here were there. Why you imbecile? <laughs> Don't you know girl fund? You imbecile! <laughs> woo, 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 woo. I didn't know girl fund. <laughs> but I do appreciate yeah. everyone who showed up. And what is the girl really fund lovely. again? The Girl Fund is the United Nation Foundation's effort to support the 300 million girls around the world who are not getting an education. Oh. Okay. This sounds like a worthy cause, right? It sounds like a worthy cause if it wasn't roped in with <laughs> grifter art and... <laughs> Color by number. <laughs> yeah, it would sound like a worthy cause if she could properly explain it, put yeah. it on... Put it on an invitation that was legible and understanding um, and didn't include Brendan Murphy and didn't include this shift to the Guatemala trip all of a sudden. Like, it's too much at once. Not only that, it would have benefited if she just went in advance and said to Howard, look, don't goof on it. I'm going to do a plug. Let me get it out. And then and then we'll be good to go. But don't mock it because. This is a serious thing. I just want to get that plug out if you don't mind. If he did mind, well, you know, but you can't do that with him. Even she can't do that to him because she's like, you can't tell him. He's like, you can't tell me what to do. It's my show. We're fighting magnets. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have, there's another gif, GIF I got to put together. Okay. And whose lives are in danger from poverty and illness and early pregnancy and forced marriage. Why do you always sound angry when you say this stuff? <laughs> okay, go ahead. That's funny because we mentioned that the last time, like, oh, wow, who the hell would want to donate to somebody who sounds like, you know, a condescending teacher? But the other thing is when she talks about poverty, uh, you know, homelessness, whatever, how about the whack packers you don't pay? Start oh, right at your fucking door that yeah, makes the hippo- this money. You That's such fuckers. a good point. That's such a good point. We apparently had, um, as far as I know, guys, the real Wendy the Retard was um or sorry wendy the conqueror i'm not gonna fucking call her that yeah they she they, they made her life calling her that and then they're gonna switch it to make it sound more palatable as if it never existed bullshit they're not, anyway, they're not she, gonna pay her instead they're just yeah. gonna rename her yeah exactly um she was on our live chat i guess she didn't know <laughs> what we were about she was there for a while people treated her really well I, I must say thank you to all the fans who um were in the live chat and treated her very uh respectfully which you should do the whack packers I, I i don't uh we're not gonna we're not gonna be a whack packer themed show because um i just hate the way they fucking enabled the 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 the, the stern show treated them most of the time some of them I don't care about, like Hybach Eric. I could care less if he died in a fucking uh, chemical fire. But um, other ones uh, I really like. Beetlejuice, I love. Hank the Angry, Angry Dwarf, I fucking loved him. And, um, you know, certain other ones, when Bigfoot would come in and just his voice would set Artie off. Um, 
<coughs> excuse me. But uh, the, uh, yeah, exactly. You're, you're going for charity and you got all these people coming in that you don't pay. You depend on sponsors to give the money, maybe. And now that you have no sponsors and you're pissed because they won't come on because they want money and they're making it off cameo that you can't give them. So right. suck, yeah. stick it up your yeah. ass. And they don't want to be humiliated. So in order for them to get any money from you guys, it requires some sort of amount of humiliation, which I'm sorry. Like if you guys are going to talk about charity, it should start right at your front door. Right. So you're also going to change their name as if that's the real problem, not the way you treat them when they come in the studio. Remember that last Nicole Bass appearance before she died? It was fucking heartbreaking. Yeah, exactly. How Not that Siobhan? I'm a Nicole Bass fan. I, oh. I don't have clean socks. Oh, so you're doing good? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's continue, guys. Sound like you're angry. I'm not angry. You're like, and this is the fun that gets the... You sound angry today. No, because I... Are you angry? No. You seem angry to me about this girl. I don't... Do do you know what I'm talking about? Robin sounds angry. Oh, he's going to agree with anything. No, 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 no. no. I I, I understand what Don't bother me. I'm sleeping. No, no, no. You're on the defensive (laughs) because you feel, you know, for some reason you have to be. Like I just wanted to know what the girl fun was. I wasn't... Wow. Did you you see that circular saw of passive-aggressive like bullshit and then already poor Artie, that goddamn fucking drug voice of his i hate it i was just gonna say to you uh being well having an ex who had to do deal with that i know the telltale signs oh so well and the voice is the dead giveaway and mm-hmm. anyone who has ever been with someone or experienced a family member in that you can immediately hear mm-hmm. that voice and you're just like oh fuck <laughs> mm-hmm. As opposed to the recent Nick DiPaolo uh, I- uh, interview that he did with Artie, and I, I said it on the thing on Facebook or in our group, I didn't hear I didn't hear addiction in his voice. I just heard that nervous sort of um, that nervous cadence he has, clean I, on- but a little nervy because he is clean. Like that's the part of a lot of a lot of artists drink or do drugs to take the edge off before they perform. It's it's you know <laughs> there's there's an industry it's called rock and roll. It was all about that. Well, unlike some podcasts who like to track his sobriety in a way of how often he's showing up on Twitter and functions Mm -hmm. and then speculate it without knowing anything, Mm -hmm. we were very cognizant of not doing that and didn't do that until we found some good information, which was correct, by Mm -hmm. the way, which was correct. He was getting well at his mother's and relearning how to live life again which mm-hmm. sounded exactly that when the right. pop interview right he did talk about his two years claim of sobriety on the nick show was bullshit because he got busted in may of 2019 but it's closer to two years than not i suppose so uh, this is typical of already he said he was on the show 10 years he wasn't it was like eight and a half or nine years let's say uh, closer to nine but he always does that like yeah. it's always like yeah, actors just shaving a couple years off their age he definitely lost his like track of uh time, time <laughs> he doesn't yeah. he doesn't know how to tell it very well that right but he's get he's in the range we'll round it up and down <laughs> it reminded me of the you guys remember one, rounding? <laughs> it reminded me of the uh don rickles joke he would throw in at dean martin he goes dean uh you would have a wonderful time if you knew you were here <laughs> it still works. Well, that's the girl. It's about yeah. educating girls in developing countries and changing their lives and changing society. See, now lives. you don't sound angry to me. Now you sound like you calmed down a little. Okay. <laughs> you get very. You get, I just get revved up. You get revved up. I, I think I'm it's a very you. important cause. Yes, I oh. know. You know what? I said to someone this morning, I'm not going to say who. Oh. Okay, hold on. Yeah, we know Ralph. Don't worry, guys. Just whenever that secret someone, whatever, <laughs> just assume it's Ralph. Yeah, the go FBI, ahead, the trans, it's all Ralph. <laughs> Ralph is. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, Robin, he says, ah, uh, yes, I'm worried about you. That is so passive aggressive, NPD. It's unfucking believable. Mm-hmm. He, he just made her talk about how she's angry he pointed it out now Mm -hmm. she calmed that down Mm -hmm. so she 
is an MPD person herself, but she chose to change the tone of her voice to mm -hmm. please him or seem more reasonable. Mm -hmm. And then he comments on that, which is so incredibly annoying. Even yeah. if you're not narcissistic, it's just right. like, I know what you're doing, fucker. And then yeah. he goes, instead of actually allowing that to play out, he goes, I'm worried about you. No, you're right. not. No, you don't no, you're not. deal with the fallout of what you just did. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, I said that go. Robin. I know you said it. Oh, <laughs> Tony. I said, Robin, that Robin. That Robin. She's that Robin. got a good heart. That's what I said. That's what I said about <laughs> And now this is the, the this is the what the what was it the um, well the flattery in order to um, well the, the, you're trying to turn on the charm as if to you know all that horrible shit you said about me just a, thirty seconds ago never happened right like oh, I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up in a bow <laughs> I'll be like Rickles at the end <laughs> it's it's not even wrapping it up in, in a bow so much as it is. Uh, He's raking in and he's weaving in these, I guess you could say compliments or concerns within mm -hmm. it. So it's not so much like I'm because it goes without. It's like a weaved basket. He's weaving in. So we're going to weave in the part where I say something shitty about you. And then I'm going to weave. I'm going to weave backwards and I'm going to weave in the part where I'm going to have concern about you. And then this is how we're going to go. If anyone weaved okay. a basket, you'll get it. <laughs> okay, so it's a demented quilt. <laughs> demented I NPD quilt. Have you? <laughs> She's a good person. And she does. Well, she thank is. You. you are a good person. But, you but it was up. a fun event. I, in fact, yeah. I even enjoyed it. You know, and I'm running around trying to introduce the people from the girl fund to the people at the party and right. uh, have them have a little interface and whatever. And so it was kind of a, a busy night, but it was a fun night. And I really, really, really appreciate everybody who showed up. I've always maintained, by the way, that when you host a party, you're never going to have a good time if you've done your job right, because you're too worried about other people having a good time. And also you're, you're concerned, like, is there enough, is the punch bowl, there's enough in there or whatever. Is there uh, enough food? Um, are people too cold, too hot, whatever. Hey, you want another drink? You're refilling, you're washing stuff. Let's get some more dishes out. It's a constant battle, especially like a house party, for example. Uh, I feel that if you're really conscientious as that kind of person, you, um, the, the joy comes from seeing other people have their great time. And that's uh, afterwards where the glow comes in. A hundred percent agree. And the fact, just think about when you think about hosting a party or I do, mm -hmm. it's we're, we're planning it too. Yeah. Robin yes. Party planners and people setting up tables. Like I'm the one buying the plates and the forks and the desserts and the food and I'm setting it up and I'm making sure the food comes at a certain time and I'm making sure everyone's in a certain way. I'm setting up the bounce house and the decorations and the balloons and the streamers. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not. Or if it's a formal sit down dinner, planning everything and making sure you put things in the oven at the right time and take them out at the right time. Bobby yeah. doesn't have to do any of that. So if she no. did have fun, it's more understandable than yeah. if a regular person is planning anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. No, I ain't one of those people. I wasn't there. Well, I thought you'd surprise me, maybe. No way. No. Oh. Okay. Well, well like maybe buying a painting to uh... you told me not to <laughs> I, I said I'll... <laughs> she wasn't surprised he didn't show up so she knows him but she was surprised he didn't buy a fucking painting or well let's be honest give Beth the money and say look buy one of this asshole's shit painting so we can toss it in the fucking trash as soon as we get it you know that's amazing I can't, I can't close my mouth <laughs> Sam really is like she just watched the end of the usual suspects for the first time. Oh my god. There's yeah. a head in the box. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's seven. That's seven. That's all right. Another another creepy uh spacey film. Send over check. I ah, never said ah, not to. Who ah. said not to? Do you want me to cut that out? No, I don't no, I knew that I was doing that. I don't oh, okay. I never saw that movie. So you okay, can keep well, this in too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I cut out the part where I asked you if I want to cut it out. If you want to cut out. <laughs> no, wait. Now we're, get, hold on. Let now me we're getting better. <laughs> you know what? Let me get my snowshoes on and drink some ice cubes. Okay. 
said, oh, I don't know. You know what? I don't know. I thought I thought that the idea was that I said it. I'll just make a donation. I don't need to buy a painting. I, I, if I get one more fucking painting. <laughs> oh my god! Somebody's. <laughs> you know, well, considering he's made painting his life and he's maintained his six hundred and fifty million dollar fortune by painting, <laughs> you think he'd have more sympathy? <laughs> Maybe it's just. If I get one more painting, your house is literally covered in selfies of Beth. Yeah. Or or if it's not, it's full of, uh, you know, like little big stick, huge stick it notes the size of a, a, a trunk and um, like adorning yeah. the office walls. His, his, his office looks like the movie Clue, like yeah. in the 90s. Exactly. Our project. I don't need it. <laughs> but I'll give you a donation. What do you need? Uh. Uh, I'll give it to you uh, straight to the girl fund. How do you donate? Where do you donate? I'll donate some girl fund. Well, I'll talk to you about it mm -hmm. later. All right, thank you. Yeah, that would have been a nice surprise. Oh, I'm I forget helping it. to kick off the event. But... No. <laughs> and then the whole time, you know. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. These two talk about charity the way you would like take a jackknife and cut the underside of Santa's bag and like just tra trail him the whole time and collect the bet, the gifts as they come out <laughs> and run away. <laughs> There's absolutely no charity he, he, in their voices. He's bad Santa. <laughs> like, <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton and Robin's the black midget in the movie. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Howard, <laughs> Howard with the last can of who hash. <laughs> Mel, Mel was there, and all yeah. I could think about was what you said. You know, he's, he's being tortured. By oh, me. <laughs> he was like, "What's Robin doing now?" He says, "Where can I just send a check?" I go, "It's not that simple. You need to go and look at this artwork." <laughs> well, you know. I, I RSVP'd as quickly as I could to be polite because I couldn't make it, but I would certainly. If what were you? Busy, what were you doing? It was, yeah. it was, it was, Audie was busy. He was asleep. <laughs> He was doing the same fucking thing you guys do, his job, and has to wake up early in the fucking morning, and then and then to make it to this fucking thing, and then all of a sudden to, to work, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're expecting a fucking drug addict, a drug addict who you're enabling on your show to go to a goddamn wine and cheese for this grifter. Okay, let's make yeah. it about him so we can, let's direct our anger to each other on him for a moment. Yeah, carry on. This is just so. This oh, should be. Just, this should be in fucking... psychology. Like who, whoever is taking classes in in Ivy League schools should pull this clip. It's insane. Totally, Bob D. There's this is one for you. Just this, that one little ten second exchange. What is already there? I've been trying to get to bed as early as possible. <laughs> There are 300 million girls out there that have no bed. Uh, listen, I'll buy them a bed. I'm saying what Howard's saying. If there was a way to directly... Donate, Artie doesn't want to see girls get an education. <laughs> that would hurt my dating game. Right. Sure. More dumb girls running around there. More oh, girls for us. Dear. You don't need them to be that... Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're coxmen. Yeah, that's... You know I, I, I do think about this, though. Yeah. Just, just the get you back thing. So, like, say... Robin saying, oh, I thought you would buy a painting, you know, surprise me. Because Robin had, to this point, showed up for Beth's stuff. The oh, FHM yeah. premiere. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, she showed up for that mm -hmm. wonky moose on a fucking cover of some shit, you know, copy of Maxim. It's yeah. like the, it really is just the watered down crappy version of maxim yeah but uh, you're right so she she it was it was tit but there was no tit for tat right so she did all of this and he had such an expectation that she would do this and she showed up for all of her animal <laughs> bullshit wonky tit for tat sorry <laughs> oh god just i mean just it kidding. would have been they both nipples pointed at each other i'm positive <laughs> <laughs> they were in the opposite direction of her, knee, of her knees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, no. You're exceptionally stupid. Now come to bed with me. You know, and there was a moment where um, Tamara, who's the woman who runs the, the girl fund, was telling a story about being in Ethiopia and going Ugh. to these schools and <laughs> seeing these girls and, you know, how...
Oh my god. Oh my god. Does this sound? <laughs> but please donate to the North Shore Animal League. <laughs> we Bianca's need a new for his friends stat. Guys, I'm so we need, sorry. We need, a, we need a wing. We need a wing for the one eyed cat. Already needs a hot wing. Oh, Jesus Christ Almighty. I know, they're just such awful people. <laughs> I would have laughed back then. I'm sure I did. Sorry, guys. My my voice is going kind of going. <laughs> I got a bit of a cough. I'm trying to nurse. I'm sorry. I should have a cough button. No. Mort's got hairballs. <laughs> <laughs> just when you hear that, Ech. <laughs> that just came right out. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it, was, Howard was, hates was, black people. Let's be well, honest. Is, and we we just announced in the first part of this this half uh, this um, recording, guys, that he had donated to Sloan Kettering, and we were proven wrong, and we admit it freely. But um, I don't understand. You can be so charitable to one thing and not have charity in your heart for other things. Again, unless we know, like it, like we've already said like a bunch of times, he just knows the, he smells the grift and he knows it. And that's really, it's not about Ethiopia. He's just, I don't want to help no, her. No, no, no. This for me is, this is how you could tell when it, when people are like, well, how do you know Howard's racist? Well, first of all, I have friends who listen to our show and who've known Stern, who have always thought mm. he was racist. Love sure. our show. And here's the prime example. This is a visceral reaction to Ethiopia colored people in need. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I well, mean, seriously, that right. is his initial reaction. And yeah. when he has reactions towards any sort of minority or poor or something, yeah. he has zero tolerance for it. You might be right. I mean, that could be it. I thought it I, I, to me it was no, strict, I'm like, right. He's not he's not really charitable. That's that's the 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 real takeaway. Not just about not I didn't even didn't even equate him no, the, I didn't equate the racism aspect to it. Oh, he'll like black people if they could do something for his show. Yeah, for Lawrence free, Taylor comes embarrass in. Embarrass themselves yeah. or if they're rich yeah. and they can like look make him look cool sitting next to him at a Knicks game. That's about right. it. <laughs> exactly. They have to go door to door to convince people to let the girls go to school. Right. And I was like, see, that's what I need to see. I need to be able to tell that story. Right. That's why I want to go, Good, go to Guatemala. Good luck. I got so many letters about horror stories in Guatemala. I won't even read them to you. It's mind numbing. Because you don't actually have them. That's why you won't read them. Yeah. And let's read the horror stories about Beth's life. Living yeah. in your fucking castle gay skull. Fuck let's off. talk about let's talk about why your Twitter feed now won't allow anybody but people you follow back to t to tweet on the Stern Show Twitter the actual Twitter thing, like that's How only started that? that only started with the Machine Gun Kelly thing and when I noticed that and I go that's about as lame and and sad as as a commentary as we could ever make in a thousand episodes of our podcast that oh, you can't goodness. like you're you're so afraid you're so afraid of negative comments that. You have to have sycophants and people that you know will only post positive things. Embarrassing. I I even think because it's gotten so negative over the years, I less think it's about he can't handle it. And it's more about this contract is coming up and he needs a Hail Mary. It mm -hmm. is third down. <laughs> We're 50 yards away. What are we going to do? Like, we got to kick a field goal. You know what I mean? Like, he is yeah. just... He doesn't know, or 60 yards away, he doesn't know what to do. Like, he no. is just like, okay, well, let's uh, clean up our Twitter. Well, a little late, dude. <laughs> the damage has already been done. It's it's a stick house on a foundation of air. Literally nothing there. And, uh, the, it, and it's no better on any social media. Facebook. Um, I mean, there are a few sycophant sites, but they're, they're, they're like tumbleweeds. And then, but Reddit has completely turned against him. Completely. And it used to be the, it used to be the, like sort of the last bastion of real, um, supposed listeners. But then it, it, people started busting people for being back office staff, clearly going in there. And their only mandate is to, you know, the people that were just created in the last little bit, like profiles that clearly you have to be brain dead to defend certain aspects of the show, even if you were still a listener today, you could not 
in all defense, in all honesty, defend certain aspects of it. There's just no way. That move that they did with Twitter by, um, you know, making the comments so you can't say anything unless you're a friend of theirs on the show. Yeah. Yeah. That is like selling a house, putting it up for sale with Christmas decorations in the summer, not taking it off. You got a Santa Claus and a fucking Frosty on your roof lit up. It's yeah. falling apart. <clears throat> and then it hasn't sold in two years. Mm -hmm. And then deciding to take off the sleigh in July and thinking you're going to get a, the same price. <laughs> I mean, so, you're, you're out of your mind. So you're is it Grey Gardens? Is, is, is it Grey Gardens? Yeah, yeah, it is. Don't ask how many people step off the plane and get robbed. <laughs> Good luck. Step off the You mean like yeah. inside the airport? No, it, well, no, they get outside the airport. They make it that far. <laughs> the pilots rob them. <laughs> That's a good one. The pilots rob them. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, isn't that, it's just as unsafe outside of New York City. I mean, people are jerking off to bath at random and spitting on her. <laughs> spitting on her, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it was good flying you. Give me that fur. <laughs> oh, when I hear those stories about how screwed up the world is, it makes me want to vomit. But, I mean, someone's got to do this work, and I'm, I'm proud of you, but <laughs> I don't know. That's tough stuff. Yeah, all of a sudden yeah. I really have a desire to go. Yeah, well, you know what? Do that. See that. Do something else. What? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Just calm down. You, you don't need to see everything. <sighs> Just stay in the house for <laughs> Don't ever leave. <laughs> Just print your wigs and try not to die from carpet fumes. I don't know who you are. Compression sacks. <laughs> We're just traveling to horrible places you're not good at it you think in your mind you're going to be good at it i i never meant you know. to go to a horrible place when i went to india right you thought <laughs> you were going Venezuela. somewhere nice. <laughs> I thought I was going to a place. now i'll be prepared yeah <laughs> we were just talking about india you were you were just mentioning india earlier <laughs> is that what made you laugh no we never meant to we never meant to go to a horrible place like india i mean do you know <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she's just so ridiculous listen yeah. to this you know no wonder people think i bang you all the time because no you know, one thinks that not <laughs> no. one whoa wait wait i'm sorry <laughs> guys I'm sorry. i normally i normally don't I don't clip it after three seconds but sometimes it's necessary um i just need to know uh let's take a poll who thinks that they <laughs> If we thought for a minute that he was heterosexual, would Robin be the object of his amorous uh, attentions? No, never. Like, uh, yeah, I, brown I, I, mounds wouldn't be his first. <laughs> yeah, but she's in it shape now, first right? First load. Uh, if you cut, if you cut her in half, she'd still be overweight for him. Like, even at this point. Yeah, she's not a Twinkie ice skater. I mean. <laughs> She's she a 13, 13 year old Ukrainian ice skater at the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> that, but on the other hand, that's right up John Hines' alley. <laughs> you fuck Robin. And I go, <laughs> oh, everyone, especially for years, you know, everyone's like, you must have fucked Robin, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's how I feel about the Black Eyed Peas. That I, they must have all had fur. Three of them fucked Berkey. I was watching them on Saturday Night Live, I told you, and. I got this really f weird feeling. He wished he was Fergie. He was he was fantasizing himself, dressed as Fergie, getting fucking sandwiched by the black eyed peas. <laughs> like, I, got is there... really, I got this really weird feeling when I was watching the black eyed peas. I mean, can you just picture him primping his wigs and going G L A M O I Oh, you as yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's, he's been going on. He's done this a few times on the show, but it's, I don't know why it made, why that's what comes to his mind here, but well, you guys sort that out for us. And by the way, Will I am and Fergie did not fuck. So maybe that's why he's getting that impression. Maybe. Yeah. That, uh, all of them have banged her at one point oh or another. And I was thinking, well, maybe that's what people think goes on between me and you. We uh, work yeah. together. And yeah, go ahead. Why would you pick the Black Eyed Peas when there's no ever a foundation in truth in that? You could what you could have Fleetwood Mac. 
Oh and yeah, well, so that's, many well, that's... bands you could pick. Gwen Stefani, no doubt. I mean, there's so many f- bands where the lead singer ended up having an affair with some of the bandmates. Yeah, and even he even picks, more recently. He picks the Black Eyed Peas. You know what that is? That's just his demented fantasy. That's him putting himself in Fergie's clothing, going in drag, and getting fucked by the rest of the band. Because you remember that Honey West fantasy that's on my channel that he talked about being tied down as yeah. Honey West and getting like getting is getting filled out like an application. So like that's that's his you know that's his sick fantasy there's some some people will beg to differ i'm sure but um and bob d if we ever get that whole um episode of npd how it relates to sexuality um that's going to be a a show on its own loads of clips to support his um his love of as you say taboos like taboo stuff stuff that would be considered taboo i suppose over the years and uh in their respective years and uh i don't know i mean (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I, don't I, get consider that. It, I consider it taboo to like the redone version of Time of, I've had the time of my life. <laughs> that redone version by them, I consider that a taboo. Anyone uh, that enjoys that version, uh, you're in trouble. Yeah. You know, I guess we have yeah. a very close relationship. Sure, absolutely. Not that close. I didn't buy a painting last night. No, he left me high and dry. <laughs> High and dry. Already right. didn't come through, Mister Generous over there. Nice. Listen, um, she just Are got finished telling. Fucking... She just got finished telling Benji on the wrap-up show clip that we played that people are not expected to go there and buy anything. They're expected to go there and look around and see the things, see the paintings, and have some wine and uh, get awareness, spread awareness of the the girl fund, the United Nations girl fund. Now she's saying, "I'm disappointed." These fucking people i work with the money bags that i do work with didn't come and buy shit i listen we've all been pressured into some sort of charities in our life sure right but at that high end of a charity you can't afford what they're asking most of the people that she's talking about now howard can so fine but i'm sure he donated something Right. And a New York gala. And yes, I know how much the cost of materials for art and canvas and paint and all this bullshit and transportation and framing. I am all aware of it, guys. He was probably charging upwards of 10 G's for some of these fucking paintings. Just because it's New York, New York gallery. You got Robin behind you. You can also price your shit up. You know, oh, this it is was... the grift. You are blinding out the grift. Get out your, yeah. you know, this is exactly yeah. what was going through his head too, by the way. Absolutely. I don't, uh, people don't know this, but... He uh, RSVP'd early. That he was did his buy a painting. Uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> people don't know this, but the artist in question owes me something, and maybe we can work uh, something work out. Yeah. Right. Artie and Brendan had a bet. He's a Red Sox. But... Go ahead. I know they're going to say it's sports, but mm-hmm. I wonder... Because remember how Brendan Murphy looks so fucked up in some of the pictures we saw? Yeah. Yeah. Like the ones with Anne Marie and stuff like he looks totally <laughs> trashed. Um, not just trash, his uh, pupils, his eyes, the way his uh lids are, everything he looks completely high off of opioids, like 100%, the sweating, I mean just everything. I would mm-hmm. say what if he owes him money for something else? That's just putting like... out Okay. Well, maybe. Who knows? I, I, I don't. I don't know about that. But, um, yeah. I, I think it's. I think it's a far. I think. Maybe. Yeah. No, I, I can imagine them talking sports because Brendan was, you know, claimed to be like an amateur basketball player and tennis player and all this shit. And and already said it himself over the years. What do you do with the father of the girl you're seeing? You know, well, you usually don't talk about the relationship. You talk about sports. That's the first go to thing. So I'm sure already talk. It's just not going <laughs> to talk about fucking want you know, like they're not. Gonna, he's not going to talk about Moreau and fucking uh, de Kooning and all these artists. He's gonna he's gonna drop like or Ansel Adams. He's gonna go like you know. Would you just see just see the you see the catch that Pedro made for? <laughs> you know? like he's gonna guess, he's gonna go into sports. You know what? That's really funny because <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, I have an older person in my life, and that's the first thing my dad and my boyfriend go to. They always went to sports. 
it's the safest foundation for a conversation when you don't want to address the, the, uh, the elephant in the room or, you know, or just, just because it's neutral. Like who's going to get upset if you talk about sports, unless you're talking about, you know, fuck the Eagles or fuck Facebook. Um, so, uh, that, that while it can be controversial, it's way less controversial than a political discussion would be or personal life. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) Neutral, neutral territory. So let's keep going. Them that the angst would go further. Does anybody playoffs. ever pay you? Did did he did, did, did he ever pay you? <laughs> well, never it's, a, back to town. it's a dinner thing. Like uh, oh, great. it wasn't a money thing. It oh. was a dinner thing. Like yeah. So, it, so now you don't even want to collect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, anyway, Robin, congratulations on raising money. Well, thank you, and thank yeah. you for mentioning the girl fund. The girl fund. Uh, my dream too is that everyone knows the girl fund. It's a movement. Oh, and the secret well, that, word for that, today. That, yeah, go that ahead. Was, that was left very odd with Artie. Like, yeah. That was a very question mark situation. Yeah, no, I don't know. I think I just probably just bet him some. It was probably just like a gentleman's bet on some sporting event. That was it. What a junkie. <laughs> That's just <laughs> junkie speak. Like, it's just all vagary <laughs> and fucking, I don't know, and maybe this, and he owes me yeah. that. Like, okay, yeah. what? Yeah. Well, you, you think you, you're expecting him to go, look, I gave him a, I gave him a hit of smack and he owes me at least, he owes me a, at least a nickel bag. And, you know, I, I don't know, man, what I'm going to do. It's a movement. So anyway, what are we doing today? Let me take a look over here. Sean and Kelly are calling in. They're a married couple who run a porn site. Oh, they want to. They want to have sex over the phone. Oh, dude. <laughs> Let me thank Fred. Fred did show up. Yeah, I heard he was there. My yeah. wife said he looked real good. Some sort of jacket on she liked. <laughs> yeah. And she said, Fred looked good. I said. <laughs> so Fred shows up. Howard doesn't show up. Beth shows up. <laughs> so did Fred stay out till midnight? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> she, well, you know, he could sleep in. All he has to do is play the Great American Nightmare and then sleep for the next two hours. He can get hey on no, Artie's hey couch. Hey, no, hey, no, hey, no, hey, <laughs> no. It's a no-brainer for that. Really? <laughs> you know, even a blind pig finds an acorn once in a while. <laughs> Did you, uh, could you say that like Herman Munster? It seems like something he'd say. <laughs> even a, even a pig can find a, even a blind pig can find an acorn once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like somebody. Yeah. Was like. Eddie. So, uh, what, isn't that his uh, Nicole Bass voice? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what was that? That was awful. That yeah, was that... just panic panic monster <laughs> yeah <laughs> Fred's on awesome. the spot herman i love how oh, people people i love how people sing the praises of fred he played sound clips he played fucking sound clips in the in the early days when they had carts that was a skill absolutely nowadays with the internet being what it is and digital like everything's everything's mp3 mp4 it's nothing it's nothingness guys and now it's nothing back then yeah that's a that was a skill but he was the worst. He was worse than Robin with his impressions. I have to say. Well, except for no, he did. He could do one. He's nobody's worse than Robin. But he was almost as bad. Listen, even when they updated the digital catalog and they put it on the platform where they could play the sound effects, he had like, for example, typing. He had it like it was typing on an IBM, you know, giant <laughs> computer from nineteen. 19- <laughs> <laughs> do 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 do. do. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> they what took an old it sounds like this if it's not from fucking what's it if it's not from Tron. 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 Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's the master computer master control program. Okay. Or <laughs> war games. <laughs> oh, war games. Oh god, now I'm thinking of Ali Sheedy. God, I had such a fucking hard on for her back then. All right. Uh, I'll leave you out of my fantasies, guys. I'll, I'll leave that in there anyway. What were you wearing? What was his jacket? It was uh, John Varvato's jacket. I'll, I'll take it that. <laughs> oh, when did it? Over the summer. Over the summer. <laughs> yeah. Did you raid Howard's garbage bags for it? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Sorry. Let me see that sometime. I will. Yeah, Fred's regular bomb vivant. I met well, at me. night, you know, when during the day you come in here, you know, and dress, right. you know I met him. He was a hick. Oh. <laughs> you know. Still am. Right. Don't let anybody fool you. He's really dressed himself up. Don't ask what's going on over there. 
Silver hair. There you go. Yes. So I got to debase Fred now because yeah. I'm not feeling like I haven't, I haven't, the, I haven't swung the ball into enough buildings yet. Let me, let me go after Fred now. <laughs> well, you know why he's doing this, right? Cause he actually followed through. Yes. He showed for Robin didn't say he showed up for Robin. He silently showed yeah. up and yep. supported Robin. Yeah. Didn't like a friend a would fucking do. Thing. Didn't say a fucking thing. And now Robin says, you know, who did show up? Fred. Howard knew he showed up. He didn't say anything. And then the second Robin brings it up, he goes, oh, yeah, Beth said you look real good. What jacket were you wearing? Because this is just Howard being a cunt, an absolute yeah. cunt to Fred yeah. for no reason. Oh, mm -hmm. Silver Fox over there. What, I knew you when you were a hick. Well, I knew you when you were pretending that you were getting beat up in Roosevelt. Yeah. <laughs> and... By the way, I saw your high school yearbook. It's an entire page of white people surrounding yeah. you. Yeah. Liar. Yeah. I knew you when Jackie was still make, figuring out your biography. Yeah. Yeah. He's a fox. Fred Norris. Hey. You know, oh, so he showed up. Kathy Mel Griffin showed up. and Barat. No, no, Bruno thought I was hot. Bruno. Yeah, the guy who came when he was Bruno. Right. Came Remember in? he was hitting on oh, Fred? Right, 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 right. Our agent was there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did he buy any paintings? No. No. You know, <laughs> he ain't buying that. <laughs> you know, Don, like she's outing him as a cheap fuck. I don't know. <laughs> Don, yeah. <laughs> look, Don's probably like, I've done enough for you. Yeah, you're lucky to be where you are, bitch. Uh, you give me, make sure my check clears every month. We'll be all right, <laughs> bitch. Yeah. <laughs> he squeaks. He always told me he's very. He's always telling me how generous he is. He's generous, but he's not frivolous or right. and that wouldn't even be frivolous he doesn't believe who was it was telling me oh it was sam ben ruby because you know we all collect wine and uh he asked don Wait what he had yeah go ahead what generous but not frivolous what the fuck does that mean she, she just had to walk it back like she she realized that as it came out of her mouth she tried to backtrack she essentially was saying right there if you leave it it's just that she was saying He's generous, but not when he sees that something is completely meaningless and pointless excuse for charity, what people are calling a charity. So he knows the grift when he sees it and he wasn't going to give money to something that was horse shit. Right. That's and now I she had to, say. yeah, she had to, she's trying to walk it back. She's just saying like, now she's trying to fix it, but she can't and you'll hear. Right. Meaning like you can't say he's generous, but not frivolous. Frivolous is, it's like going to a store and you're going to buy groceries and you end up buying uh, 10 candy bars and some gum right. and Tic Tacs at the end of the cashier. You yeah, know six I mean? cartons, six cartons of Pop-Tarts. Right. So if you describe him like that, then what are you saying about your charity? Exactly. Yeah. Dummy. Are you, are, you're, the, yeah. you're, you're the fucking Mentos at the end of aisle six. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, you know, you know, you know what Robin just pretty much did one years ago, years ago, I'll give it this little anecdote when, when, um, the dollar, the U S dollar was way stronger against the Canadian dollar. We would go down to, um, we'd drive across the thousand islands bridge and go shopping in, um, Watertown. And, um, uh, I can't remember. I think it was called salmon run mall and we'd go there and get all this stuff. And I don't know what the fucking purpose was. Cause I mean, after you paid any kind of taxes on stuff, you ended up with, it was just an excuse to go to the States basically and shop. So we, it's the dead of summer. <laughs> my, my aunt was driving me and my three cousins and, uh, she, we went and shopped and they said, okay, now what? I said, well, okay, you want, I want you to put everything you bought, all the clothing, you got to put it all on. So I had four t-shirts on me and I'm dying with the fucking heat. There's no air con. And we're there at the, uh, the border and the, the border guards are saying, did you buy anything? Nah, we just went over for a little visit and they see me sweating and they're, they, they know like, they can smell it, but they were willing to let us go. And right as we're about to go, she says, thank you. And she said, well, the kids did buy a few things. <laughs> she, her guilt got the better of her. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then they gave her shit for 10 minutes while I was dying in the car. <laughs> and, she, and they go, ma'am, that's real. That's you could be getting serious trouble. So Robin's the same. <laughs> like she, I, 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 could, she like outed the, herself. So the the Canadian dollar back then was stronger. No, the the American dollar was stronger. So like, oh, uh, okay. so like with the with the exchange, like it was cheaper to get stuff. 
in the states um like when there, I go it was to Quebec like I would love when I go to Quebec and I'd have they the exchange rate was like if I put my American money and I exchange it I get more and I was like this is awesome <laughs> yeah no at that time like because we you know the different like the, the sales tax was a was a, a big issue back then so we like we we're paying 15 percent on every item so uh i don't know i can't remember what it was at that time at any rate um so robin <laughs> just completely outing her, her charity as a piece of shit and and yeah. obviously <laughs> is this print that back. Movie. Exactly. Don never has a very expensive bottle of wine. No. He has good wine, right. but his fan. whole goal is not to pay for it. Yeah, because sometimes, sometimes he'll buy wine and I get half the case. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, everything's like $40, but then he takes part because he goes, in a year, this is going to be worth $200. Right. He'll hear about a good vintage yeah. and he'll buy it. Wine speculators. There's nothing more fucking shishi than that. Get a wine because you like it. Don't get it because it's worth a shitload of money, assholes. I have. <laughs> Fuck so, off. My best friend, her family, they do this show in Buffalo. It's called Spiel the Wine. And okay. he has this huge wine cellar in his house. And he does this whole. We go to. I like the tastings because I like to get drunk on nice wine if they invite me. But like. I don't care. Like, to yeah. me, it's not like a, I don't get it. I don't yeah. get it. Like, I just no. like what I like. I understand yeah. if people like it, but he mm -hmm. has this whole she, she show called Spiel the Wine. And oh, it God. legit makes me laugh my ass off. And I, she lives in Arizona. So I call her and I go, your uncle's on TV right now, like locally. <laughs> and he oh. has this show where he swirls the wine and talks about the grapes and the process. And there's nothing more fucking awful. <laughs> no, it's it, listen, I, I, I'm a guy when I was just down, I was near the, um, I was <laughs> near the palace of Versailles and, uh, we, my wife and I were drinking wine right out of the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> in a park. <laughs> it couldn't get much more ghetto than uh we, we had no the, brown I said brown bagging near royalty. <laughs> we didn't even brown we did well it was it wasn't a brown bag, but know, we, we were so blatant we were so blatant about it. I go, <laughs> man, this is a good vintage slug. <laughs> I love that what, what's that what's that line of the, the, the <laughs> Tim Meadows in the when he the ladies' man he goes I, I, I happen to and I happen to understand a lot about wine. In fact, you may call me a wine. No, <laughs> <laughs> up a lot of the least expensive of those wines. You right. know, or like the mid range of those wines. That's and right. Have them appreciate over time. <laughs> That's I want to share to the rat gut, nineteen forty nine. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so that's his thing. Yeah. Right. So, so you know, I in fact, when he was uh, decorating his house, he was telling me how he went to auctions. Nah. <laughs> Think, you know, people going out of business, like he found out a piano company was... So he sounds like some fucking, like, like waiting for someone... <laughs> what do they call them? Ambulance chasers? Someone yeah. looking for... <laughs> he, he's Salino and Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be yeah, you're bleeding on the street. Hey, you need a lawyer? <laughs> I could use a fucking doctor. He's <laughs> Buckwald That's slip and fall. <laughs> <laughs> he's searching for fucking. He's the guy trolling like old age homes who's died so I could buy their caddy with three thousand clicks on it. <laughs> Oh my god. That's like gonna, the most vulture move. We have to cut out our laughing for two months. Maybe. Decorated? <laughs> he went to the piano auction because they had to clear out inventory. Are you in foreclosure? Let's talk. And he's very <laughs> excited when he tells you. Hey, Don's got a lot of money. I don't know why he's got to go to auctions. Yeah, he loves to do that. I think that he's old stuff. school. Yeah, huh? It's like these old people who used to go shopping at Woolworths and go, guess what I got? $1.99. <laughs> He'd go to a funeral. He'd go to a funeral, hand out his business card <laughs> to the kids <laughs> the, the estate. In you know, well words. Fantastic. Oh, so Dom was telling you he went to like people's garage sale and found 
Uh, oh, he said, I found a furniture company that was going out of business. <laughs> 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 they had to auction off everything. Well, he seems yeah. to have a, a very, he's very savvy business-wise in a lot of areas. I met him once at his office, and he he told me about an extraordinary decision he made in a real estate situation mm -hmm. that was just, like, very, like, like for, foreseeing like it was it was, uh, it was a good move you know yeah. that not a lot of people would make right. don's got to uh, upgrade his uh, computers i go over his uh, office oh right. my goodness i'm going to bring it up to him because everything the electronic equipment <laughs> and the av oh, it's crazy he still got those computers where you know you turn them on and the you know that fl that flashing cursor comes right. up and then you type oh, in some commands yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got to get some windows a big box <laughs> he's got to get that windows uh whatever that is xp <laughs> Mm -hmm. Operating system. Windows operating system. I think he's still on DOS. <laughs> he is. I'm telling you, he's got them programs where you the blinking light. And oh, the, my goodness. Yeah, it's wild over there. We might as well still be like that with the, with the way the app works, according to what some of you guys tell me. That is still dropouts in fucking 2020, and they're still like... You know, they're five minutes ahead here and ten minutes behind there. It's it's in different states. It's awful. It's supposed to be satellite. It's supposed to be Wi-Fi. It drops that. out. Dro the satellite drops out constantly when I drive, especially. I mean, like, I live in a kind of rural community, and it drops out constantly. Even now? I'm, oh, my God. All the time. Jesus. We can be mid-song, and it's right around the same part, so I know when it's going to drop out. You mean the same part of wherever the drive is? Like if it's through a yes. tunnel? Jesus. No, it's There's not no excuse. Oh, okay. It's, I know I'm saying like amazing, dead air. Just dead air. Just drops wow. out. Okay. <laughs> no clouds, nothing. All of a sudden it just decides, no. Satellite. Yeah, wonderful. Serious. <laughs> no, no auction, man, for computers. <laughs> Computer technology has changed. So I was watching Mission Impossible 1. That's from 1996. And he's typing in a computer. And it looks ancient, the yeah. computer already. In fact, it was funny because I just bought a new laptop, and the guy said to me, well, do you want something that'll be good for at least three years? Yeah. You know, because they are constantly upgrading, and right. whatever this Pentium program was, was the latest one that might be um, good for three years. You know? And we continue. You know, it might be the working system for three years. What, uh, what time did you get home last night? Probably about 9.30. 9.30? What time did you go to sleep? Oh, I didn't oh. go to sleep. What? You're you're still thinking of Beth and the twelve, the midnight thing? <laughs> Who wouldn't be? Yeah. Um, the, so Robin what? left it, unless he was bullshitting about her when she got back. I don't know. He I, sounded. I don't pissed. believe it. Yeah. So Robin left. So it really was till nine, and then she just went home. Wow. Yeah, until nine, and she went home. Beth went out till midnight with who? Wow. Where? And he didn't give any details about it. And he no, obviously he still separate bedrooms. And she said, and he said she was all dressed sexed out, as he said. Is no, that the foxed. word? Foxed. Foxed, foxed out. Sorry, my mistake. <clears throat> I mean, come on. Isn't that such a current term? Foxed out. <laughs> so I wonder who she porked. <laughs> just, I, I, get, I just right now picturing her, that fucking lunkhead, like doing the WAF dance to TikTok. Because I was all charged up. It was a really I knew good it. event. Well, she yeah. was working the room. She, I, mean, I know she's speech. worn out a little. I can tell. Unbelievable. How, I can tell when Robin's worn out. No, I my voice definitely because I talk. No, your voice sounds good. But I I know I'm you know it's not what it usually feels like to talk. Yeah, and you're not you. you when... This is passive aggressive NPD. So I can f I can sense you're not like how you normally are, Robin. Mm -hmm. You you're a little off. And so now she's coming up with a, an excuse. But what are the reasons how she's off? I might have lost myself, actually, now that I'm thinking now that when I'm thinking about it, because <clears throat> she fuck, I don't know. I don't know. She's being oh, she's being pelted questions that she normally isn't um, um, directed at her in such a way that have things to directly do with her. Maybe they're shooting the shit about a subject, but they're talking directly to her. She hasn't yeah. filled it anything in a way that doesn't sound, I don't know, that yeah, she's you might doing be, a bad job. You might be right, yeah. You start saying might be instead of might be. I know you're a little woozy. Did you drink last night? No. You didn't. You, no. you just stayed up late. 
Jesus. Yeah, I know. I know everything about you. <laughs> I, can, I can read you like tea leaves. Yeah. yeah no. People were saying we're not going out after. I said, not me. No. Yeah. Good. That's hello. Pe- oh, that's funny. People said, "What? What? I'm gonna. I'm gonna throw this at you. What are the odds you think that Brendan nailed Beth? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You're going with that. I'm going hundred percent. Went to a club. Did coke. Definitely fucked. Hence midnight. Hence midnight. Or later, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. I think that's a, there's a good possibility. Good to see you using some common sense, like going out till five in the morning. It was funny because, you know, it was a pretty big room, and the people who were from the fund, when they spoke, you know, they had to, could you come closer so I can be heard and I don't have to yell so much? All I have to do is get up there. I said... I don't have any trouble making myself heard in this room. No, you're very, uh, you're very, uh, you're very, uh, you're not shy. Before we started, I think it is weird, though, that he's saying, oh, how long were you out till? What time? Like, her father, in a way. Like, I just don't, I just don't think that's normal, the way he's talking to her about time. It, it denotes, like, ownership. It's almost like, uh, I'm your... Uh, like I'm your, I'm your keeper. I'm the one who's supposed to know your comings and goings no matter what. I agree. There's, it is, it is very odd to hear. Now, if she screwed up, like in a job sense, because he's essentially her employers, you know, some whatever way he's her superior. If she was doing something wrong on the job, like coming in drunk or coming in high or, you know, screwing up, then I'd say, okay, of course there's a reason to address the time that she came home or the time she went to bed, maybe in a personal discussion. But this, I just don't see any reason for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even have an issue. I could talk in Carnegie Hall. They could hear me at the back. Yeah, you can't argue with Robin. I've had arguments with Robin <laughs> early on in our <laughs> lives together. And no, you don't want to do that. And she cannot yell me. She cannot yell me. I probably can out yell just about anybody. Yeah. Except maybe a crazy person. I got <laughs> like a, t- a certified no. crazy person. So that is the end of that clip, guys, and that's going to wrap up what we have to do because the next clip is uh, actually going to start the first mention of the 15 Foundation. It's real short, but we're going to leave that be the beginning of part four. Um, Sam, once again, thank you so much for agreeing to put this one to bed. And we hope everyone has enjoyed the series so far. We don't know how long it's going to go, but we're going to keep going as long as we can. Um, I want to thank all of the Patreon uh, patrons to, for subscribing and the newer ones and the existing ones. Thank you guys so much. Um, we hope you've enjoyed the um, Robin on Sally. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was um, probably one of my favorite episodes, to be honest with you. Yeah. I enjoyed that so much just because I used to watch Sally back in the day. Mm-hmm. Especially when I fake sick and stay home from school. I mean, that was my sister's number one, and we loved Sally. Mm-hmm. I can believe it. I'm going to try to make a new outro for this one and try to make it 15 Foundation related. Usually it's an Artie thing or Eric the Midget, but I'll see what I can put together that's Robin related. I so, love the outros. Guys, uh, join us on Facebook, join us on Twitter. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much. We love you and take care. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. I have to dismantle them. them I, 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 I like Artie. So I let's like say people Robin. work for Robin. And, yes. and, and, and let's say they can't work with Robin. And Robin will not see their point of view, right? She will right, only see big, her own. It, it's exactly the, that. Is that a case with you and me? No. no absolutely not. But, 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 but Howard's famous. Years. But that's because Howard's enormously famous. Hey, hey, what are you talking about? He wasn't enormously famous when I met him. Yeah, but he was your ticket. No, I was thinking my about... My ticket? I, God knows he was my ticket to hell. So he was thinking... <laughs> <laughs>